fight of my life. The Tuesday Night Contender Series live and only on UFC Fight Pass. I don't want to look back a few years from now and say, man, I could have been it. I could have had it all. I could have, I could have done it. I'm going for a world title, baby. Let's do it. One day closer to my dreams coming true. I never want to do anything that's going to harm our sports image. I know from this day of my life, never be the same. He might be the greatest talent that we've ever seen in the UFC. John Jones is the youngest champion in UFC history. This is where the real challenge begins. And you have things thrown at you. How will I react? This is going to test who I really am. John can do anything he puts his mind to. He is his own worst enemy. Will I be the right person? John Jones pleads guilty to a DWI charge. Cover, it's over. He tested positive for cocaine, injected in rehab. Will I continue to be humble? I hope he's somewhere crying right now. Well, I always respect people. Jones is charged in a felony hit-and-run incident. He's been stripped of the title. He was recently thrown in jail for a probation violation. A lot of questions will be answered about me. I've sworn to protect the citizens from people like you, Mr. Jones. I think some people love the chaos. The parties, the drugs, the alcohol. He might have needed that in order to be who he was. Some strong demons tugging at him. Into open flame. And until you completely give in to the fact that these demons have you, something in it had a power. you can never overcome them. so in love with the narrative. And the place you need to reach. He's obsessed with winning over the hearts of people. I haven't done all these things. I haven't wrecked my vehicle. I didn't get stripped of my championship. I'm a good person. And John, you are a bad person. When you get your together and you're ready to fight, I'm here waiting for you. You know it. DC feels as if I need some more humiliation. What's this guy gonna do to mess this up this time? Don't you ever I'm sick of being that guy, and I'm ready to get out of my own way. When I was a man, we I may see John become the person that he's always tried to convince us that he is. The only way he becomes that person is he loses to me July 29th. Always keep him on a I need to win this fight. I need to get my life back.
We are in Canada's largest city. They call it the Six. Welcome to Toronto. We're at the Budweiser stage. You know, this venue holds about 15,000 people, and they are expecting a near capacity of 15,000 fight-crazed Canadian fans here who are waiting to see two of the biggest names in combat sports, Conor McGregor and Floyd Money Mayweather. Hello, everyone. I'm Brian Custer alongside my Showtime colleague. This is the former two division world champion, Pauli Malignaggi. And Brandon Schaub, of course, former UFC fighter, now UFC analyst. This is stop two of a four-city global press tour where you have Conor McGregor and Floyd Money Mayweather throwing, let's say, verbal jabs at one another yeah. as they promote probably the biggest fight that we've seen in some time. And it all goes down August 26th in the fight capital of the world, Las Vegas, Nevada, at the T-Mobile Arena. You can see the fight on Showtime pay-per-view. Floyd Money Mayweather coming out of retirement after nearly two years trying to run his record to an unprecedented 50-0, and taking on the notorious one, the biggest name in UFC, Conor McGregor, the only man to hold two world titles simultaneously. First stop was in Los Angeles, and I guess I'll come to you here, Brandon. Your first impression when you think about what we saw in stop one. It was insane. I've never seen anything like it. And this is just the first stop of the press tour. Imagine August 26. Imagine that atmosphere. I've I've been a part of a lot of major sports. Nothing. I've never seen anything like this. It's crazy. We did Mayweather Pacquiao. Tell me how that just that that press conference, the first stop. Well, here's the thing. I, I've been I've been saying this uh, for some time. It's got the same magnitude as Mayweather Pacquiao, possibly even bigger. And I'll tell you why this has the potential to be bigger. Conor McGregor is a massive personality. So he helps sell this fight with his personality in the press conferences. Pacquiao made with the press conferences, let's face it, they were kind of a dud. You know what I mean? The fight was always going to sell itself. It was kind of a dud. These press conferences, they keep, they're going to keep raising the ante. I mean, they raised up the ante yesterday. They're going to raise it more today. They're going to raise it more tomorrow in, in Brooklyn and then finally London. And then we talk about the press conferences. What about the weigh-in? The weigh-in is going to be sick. I mean, the weigh-in is going to be insane. And once you watch the weigh-in, you're going to have everybody wanting to order the pay-per-view the next night. Well, keep this in mind, folks. When you talk about the first stop in Los Angeles, 11,000 people came out just for the press conference. All the tickets are free. But you know what? There were scalpers actually scalping some of those tickets as high as $40, and people were paying the price for that. People lined out for hours just to get in to see and hear two of the biggest names in combat sports. If this stop, Toronto, is anything like we saw in Los Angeles, this stop will be electric. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good afternoon to you, and indeed we welcome you to Los Angeles for our first stop of our four-city, three-country international press tour. It's Mayweather versus McGregor on Showtime Pay-Per-View. You know, they said this fight could never be made. They said this fight would never happen. Am I surprised that at age 40, Floyd is coming out of retirement to fight someone who is younger, bigger, stronger than he is? No, not at all. This is Floyd's plan, to do the biggest, most memorable, most exciting, most spectacular events that sports has ever seen. That's what August 26th will be, and that's been the plan all along. What's up, Los Angeles? Ladies and gentlemen, the notorious Conor McGregor! Baby, we did it! 20,000 people, I'm absolutely honored to be here before you. He is fucked. He's in a fucking tracksuit. He can't even afford a suit anymore. His little legs, his little core, his little head. I'm gonna knock him out inside four rounds, mark my words. I'm a young, confident, happy man that has worked extremely hard for this. The movement, the power, the ferociousness. He's not experienced this. I don't fear him. If this was a true fight, it wouldn't even take one round. All these rules, all these restrictions, it doesn't faze me, it amuses me. 
The gloves, they have to be 10 ounce. I, I'll wear 10 ounces. No gloves made out of horse hair. Okay, no problem. All I need is a gum shield, line me up to the ring, and I'm good to go. So, Floyd has a problem, but doesn't want to come over and deal with it. He wants me to come over his side. That's no problem, I'll do that. That's confidence. So, um, look, let's get this world tour started. We'd like to welcome Floyd Money Mayweather! I don't give a fuck if it's a ring, it's an octagon. Put me in there and I'm gonna kick ass. Don't be talking shit. You do give a fuck if it's an octagon. All workers, what? Well, point to the fucking easy work there. You light them up and I knock them down like bowling pins. And August 26th, I'm gonna knock this bitch out too. I haven't knocked nobody out in about 20 years. Dance for me, boy. Dance for me, son. Dance for me. Still got a hundred million, and then he never touched it. That's an tax man. You right. I'm the IRS, and I'm gonna tax your ass. I'm not gonna do shit. Hey, he look good for a seven-figure fighter. He look good for an eight-figure fighter, but I'm a nine-figure fighter. And y'all know what? This bitch made three million dollars his last fight. But we know that's training camp money for me. And if you want eight ounce gloves, let's put eight ounce gloves on. If you want four ounce gloves, let's put four ounce gloves on. You can get it right now. You can get it right now. God don't make mistakes. And God only made one thing perfect. And that's my boxing record. Hey, don't we gotta pose the fighters now? Face to face. Now, after their first stop there, Conor McGregor had intimated that he had believed that Showtime had cut off his mic at some points during the press conference. He couldn't respond to Floyd Mayweather. Well, the head of Showtime Sports, Steven Espinosa, released a statement, basically, in essence, that said, at no point did Showtime or event productions cut the microphone intentionally during Tuesday's kickoff event in Los Angeles. The point of this world tour is to let these guys interact with their fans and with e each other. Cutting the mics would go against our goal of delivering these fighters to the masses and letting their charismatic and entertaining personalities take center stage. And that's is what he is saying is, listen, Showtime is responsible for the audio you see on this broadcast. What happens here at the actual event is on the event people themselves. They have no control over that. And they, they were the ones who were cutting off the mics at that point. But let's get back to what we saw in the first press tour stop. And let's start with some of the key moments. And I thought to me, one of the most engaging key moments was the actual face off. When we first saw these guys get the face off. And listen, at one point, that thing kind of got inten intense. You guys have both been in it. Brendan, you've been in it. Paulie, you've been in it. So my question as we take a look here and show you these guys. Oh, no, no, no. Listen, no, no, no. is it number one? Is he just selling the fight? Are you number two, trying to get into your opponent's head, or all of the above? You know, I, to me, the guy who stole the show, especially early on, was Floyd Mayweather. He went vintage Floyd. He went super vintage Floyd. And if you look back, I haven't seen him kind of turn to this heel in a long, long time. And Connor's bringing it out of him. Because Connor, what he brings to the table is a lot, and it's a lot to deal with. And, you know, listen, I love Connor, everyone. That's why I'm here. I love Connor, but yesterday, I, I thought Conor got a little outshined, and I've never seen that personally. And I thought Floyd, was, he, man, he was on it yesterday. He knew he had to rise to the top, and he did it. Well, you, you, obviously, you can see the intensity here you in know, his face-off. You, you know what it is, Brian, and, and as a, a former older fighter myself, you know, I, 
as you get older, I mean, when you're young, sometimes you're a big trash talker. You want everybody to see what you're about. You want to you want to get the big you want to get the big cliche lines. You want to be quoted. You want everybody to see you talk, and you want to you know just pump your chest out and show yourself. As you get older, then you kind of chill back and lay back, and just you're more about the business, you're more about the money and whatnot. You know, you're not as passionate about all the promotional stuff. You know, Floyd had kind of become that, but sometimes. And I had this with Adrian Broner. Sometimes you get that young guy <laughs> who has a great trash talking ability and he brings it out of you and he brings back your old tricks and he brings back all the old stuff that you just kept hidden away. And you figured like, I will pack that up, but that's not necessary anymore. You just bring it right back. And I felt like Conor McGregor did that to Floyd Mayweather yesterday. Conor got up and started talking. He started amping it up. He said he got things started. I mean, I thought I thought I agree with Brendan. I thought Floyd eventually outshined him. But I did. I can only say that. Because Connor got the thing to say, he said it all first. But, but to that point, Paulie, I, I thought Floyd had a huge advantage by going second. Because cause Connor, this is kind of new. This is a new waters, and, uncharted yeah. territory. So he comes in here, he kind of gives a speech. He doesn't really know the lay of the yes, land. That's well, a good Brent, point. Well, Brent, and then it, Floyd it, goes it, well, and just Floyd comes with the heaters. It, it's, but he, Brent, watch he, today. He seemed like to me Connor McGregor like a fish out of water early because I don't think he expected he had to give a speech. He thought maybe he was just going to come up. They were going to introduce him, maybe face off. That would be it. Like he said, oh, they want us to make a speech. Yeah. So he kind of talked about his family and being a father now. That's what motivates me. Talked a little bit of trash. But then all of a sudden, Floyd comes up second that's and the threw thing, the heat. No, that's the thing. When you're on the A side, you go second. How dare the you? The A side goes second. How dare that's you? The, one of the advantages the A side has. They go second throughout the whole promotion. They come in the ring second as well. You always get the last word that way. And it's, it is an advantage, especially when you got two trash talkers. You know, you got the advantage when you go last. But, but Con Connor adapted well, because yeah. as it went on, he was like, oh, we're doing this? Right. Oh, I can do this. <laughs> yes. And then in the post-post fight press conference with Floyd Sr., he, he did some great, he had some great quotes, he had some great lines. And that's where you see a true Conor McGregor in his element. It's, I'm telling you, today, yeah, it's a different say. story. Yeah. It's I a said, different it's, story. It's like the battle told yesterday. Yes. Today, they're going to come out with the heat. Oh, we're they playing prison rules. <laughs> we're going prison rules and rules all right all right all right floyd and no one's better in the world than connor i'm telling you, you see today he's, he's gonna win this one undisputed today you, you, know, I, I, you I, predicted that yesterday yeah, yeah. Brandon, you predicted that yesterday well hey me and connor both got a little off guard there. Yeah. Yeah. you know you you've made the point that you felt like connor is the a side of this fight and we, we'll talk the business of boxing aside yeah. i think a large part because of the fan response and no matter whether it was los angeles or even here in toronto it seems like the fans have just gone crazy whenever someone says Connor, so whenever someone says McGregor, they just go crazy. I think, is that what you're saying when you say you feel like he's the A side because of the response? Yes, and I realize the business side, and on the business side too, to that point, Connor McGregor, you got to realize he's never missed any fight he's ever been in has been the biggest UFC event. He's never had an off night. Even when he lost to Nate Diaz, it's one of the biggest fights of all time. Then he came back to revenge that fight. So for Connor, what he brings is the A side. And when you look at this crowd, and we were in uh, Los Angeles yesterday, Toronto tonight, and then tomorrow New York, then it's London. It's only gonna get bigger. It's only gonna get bigger. He's relevant. He's younger. He's 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 the young line. Everyone wants to see this guy. Look, these they were selling tickets to a press conference for God's sakes. And also, what guy could Floyd Mayweather possibly fight in the boxing world? A Keith Thurman? Who? If that, I'd love to see that. Spe Earl but they're, they're bigger. They're bigger threats to me, but less promotable. Yeah. This is all, and that's where money talks. At the end of the day, what you're talking about, Connor, is the reason this fight gets made. He's a polarizing figure. He's a guy who steps in the room. All eyes go gravitate to him. All the attention gravitates but to him. But why is that, Paulie? Because he's a, he's an amazing fighter. People forget he brings that to the table. You got to remember, he's backed it up. Oh, yeah. Your bottom line always has to be you have to be good at what you you're doing. You got to win. In this case, it's fighting. You got to be the best fighter. You got to be a winner in order to let all the other intangibles matter. The other intangibles will not matter if you don't win. And, you know, and going into what we talked about, how these guys played it out, you know, early on, as we talked about Conor McGregor, kind of looked like a fish out of water early on. You know, listen, these things are scheduled. The fighter is supposed to come on at this time. You know, the other fighter comes on at this time. Hey, Conor McGregor just came on the stage early, walked around, did a little something, looked around, and everyone was like, wait, wait a minute, he's not supposed to be on stage right now. All of us. And he did it for quite a while. Uh, kind of went right off script. And then eventually, everyone else started to join him on the stage. And then, like you said, he was surprised he had to give a 
even give a speech because he wasn't expecting that. But then, as you see him there, that's where he came on the stage kind of unexpectedly. Yeah. He's soaking it in there. He's taking in all the energy of that crowd, yeah, too. Yeah, absolutely. But, but you that's know an what? ego feeder right there. You I, just I feed agree. Your that's ego. an ego feeder. But even even then, even he was a, 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 you know, a fish kind of out of water in that whole situation there, he adapted. And you see, it never shook his confidence. He's never been more confident. Even, even when Floyd called him out and let's steer off right now, you see him with this, the belief that this kid has in himself. That's why he's at where he's at. He's not going to be shaken. And I, I don't think you can say Floyd Mayweather, to me, looked a, a little bit shaken. A little bit shaken yesterday. Lips were quivering. Let's be honest here, fellas. Lips were quivering. Showed up. Friendly, showed come up. on. He's come on. He's looking for some. He's looking. I'm not looking. He's looking for some. Come on, Come on, I'm trying to mark in the fight, too. But I don't know if Floyd's lips are quivering. I don't know about that. I thought. Go back and look at this. Well, listen, we've got video of it because after after Connor spoke, then it was Floyd's turn. He came up, and he went kind of old school, like wrestling. Yo, you know, man. he would make a statement, walk away from the mic. Make a statement again, walk away from the mic. You know, and, 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 and really trying to sell his point, and as you point out, sell this fight. You know, anybody that watched the old WWE or WWF wrestlers in the 80s and when, when I was a kid, Knows what I'm talking. He's gonna know what I'm talking about here. Remember the old interviews of Mean Gene Oakland, and he had the, he had the microphone, and the wrestler he'd be about to be interviewed was next to him, and the wrestler would pace back and forth, and then the wrestler would yell into the mic or something, like the Macho Man, Yeah, Mean Gene, or something. Like that. Then he'd walk away. Then he'd come back and say something else, and he'd walk away. And it took that WWF WWE mentality. And I was looking for Floyd doing that God yesterday. Don't make I mean, there's no Mean Gene in the ring. And God I mean, there's no Mean Gene on the podium. Perfect. But the podium was his and Mean Gene. Yes. He just kept going back to it, saying yes. something. Walking away. He really Going embraced it. it. And you you can't write this stuff. If you if yesterday you told me before, hey, Floyd's gonna come in, he's gonna steal the show. And now Connor's gonna come back, he's gonna steal the show. It's a back and forth. This is, if you if you like ratings, if you want a spectacle, this, you couldn't call this any better. Hollywood can't write this. Uh -huh. You cannot write this. So Brendan, you you expect to see a more aggressive Conor McGregor right out of the box. Yes, now he knows what's going on. He, he knows exactly what Floyd's bringing to the table. He's going to have some burners in his back pocket now, and he, he's going to be able to drop some lines on him, and, and, and he knows exactly how to do it. He's he the might, best in the world at doing it. He might even bring his own battery-powered microphone so they can't shut down. <laughs> <laughs> he might. Oh, my God. He might. I wouldn't walk be surprised. On, walk on stage like the Bishop Don Juan here. <laughs> Hold it my, uh, let me tell you something. We talked a little bit about this crowd. Listen, this is a venue, this Budweiser stage that holds 15,000. I'm telling you, it is already starting to swell up. I mean, the crowd, electric here in Toronto. Listen, this is an MMA city. They love mixed martial arts in this area here in Canada, especially Toronto. And I'm telling you, you're going to expect the thousands here at the Budweiser stage. Now, I'm kind of curious to see what Floyd Mayweather we see today. We saw the more animated Floyd Weather. He was on 10 right out of the box. So do you do that again here in Toronto? Can he? Can he bring it to another level? Because because Connor started off at a 6. I've seen him go to 11. So he has a lot of levels to go. Well, Yesterday was a 10 well, Connor. Well, that's the thing. Again, being the A side, he's going to go second. So Connor's going to set the tone. Connor's going to go first. He's going to set the tone. It's going to be up to Floyd to see if he can match it. Yesterday, he was able to match it and surpass it, I felt. We'll see today, Connor's going to know that. Knowing what's ha what he's going into, Connor's going to, I think he's going to excel and t be twice as animated today. Well, that's what, that's, what, that's what the big question of the day is. Can Floyd animate himself up a little bit more? Now, listen, Floyd Mayweather has always been accustomed to crowds being against him. It's one of the reasons why he's gotten to be so rich, because either you love him or you hate him. You want to see him win or you want to see him lose for the most part. Do you think any of this will start to wear on him as we go from city to city? Because this crowd out here, you think it's all Ireland out here right now. And it now. is. And it is. This is what's going to wear on him is the camera and the attention that Connor demands. Floyd's never had a bigger personality. He's never had a polarizing figure like Connor McGregor where the camera goes from Floyd and they stay on Connor. If that post post fight presser, most of those guys were there for Connor, not so much Floyd. In Paul, you know it's better than anyone. He's an egomaniac that has to mess with him a little bit. He's never had the spotlight taken from him like a Floyd Mayweather. Like this is going on. So with do him. you well, just that, have to embrace the the, the villain? Well, do you just say you it from to, Floyd? Yeah, that, that's what Floyd's always embraced. But I think that was why he was so determined to outshine Connor yesterday and start yeah. with the big uh, big trash talking yesterday was because man, nobody is gonna outshine me. Right. Uh, nobody ever gets the better of me and outshines me. I'm always the center of attention. This guy's a threat. 
if I'm going to get more shine than this guy, I need to really up my game. We'll see how fast and how far he can up it, because I expect Connor to up it today. Yeah, D did anything surprise you from what you saw yesterday? Yes, a few things. I thought I thought when Floyd went, you know what? You want to do four-ounce gloves? Let's do four-ounce gloves. You want to do an octagon? We can find the octagon. Listen, I love Floyd Mayweather, but and he's hyping the fight better than anyone. He's hyping it more than I am right now. <laughs> But no one believes that. You're not going to fight in four-ounce yeah. gloves. There's no fight in the octagon. Yeah. I, thought, I, but I thought it was brilliant when he said that. That surprised me. I didn't think he would take it there. Yeah. It's, it's funny. I ran into Floyd about over a year ago, maybe, maybe about a year ago, and we were talking. They were talking maybe maybe a little less than a year, around nine to the last, not, nine to the last 15 months. And I remember I, I ran into him at a fight in Florida in, in a casino, and it, the talk was becoming pretty vociferous about the Conor McGregor fight. And I asked him, I was like, yo, man, what's going on? Is this really happening? He goes, yeah, yeah, it's going to happen. And I, you know, I, I thought Floyd was just giving me a, a, a bunch of, a bunch of lines, and I was like, "What you gonna do?" He goes, "We might do it in the cage." Oh, so I was on. like, I, 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 mean, on, I bro. So that's what I'm saying. I think Floyd will just say anything just to get you to get, because he knows whatever he says will be quoted, and then people will talk about it. I didn't take him seriously, but an idiot reporter might take him seriously. For sure. You know what I'm no. saying? Now listen, because you, I know you're talking about Floyd, and I want to get into this fight because Conor McGregor also said yesterday at, after uh, the press conference, he talked about you. And, he, yeah. and someone asked him, I said, hey, is Paulie Malignaggi coming in and sparring with you? And he said, listen, I'm not bringing Paulie Malignaggi for his boxing brain. I'm coming because he's got to take some knocks for the trash Whoa, talk he what? said. Whoa. In other words, he said, you got to pay for your mouth. He said, you've been put some respect on his <laughs> name. Oh, Watch out, so, Birdman. I want to know. I want to know. And I think everyone else wants to know. What's the deal? You going to go far? And, and he said, it ain't for the boxing brain. He trying to knock you out. Listen, listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. I'm going to tell people how it is for everybody that's not familiar with how training camps work, okay? Even if me and Connor were super respectful and we were hugging it out and talking all great things about each other, even if there had been no trash talk, in a boxing training camp, and I'm sure it works this way in MMA, when you're sparring, you are trying to light the other guy up. Right. I don't care if he's your best friend. I was always told since I was a kid, I don't care if it's your mama across the ring, yes. you're trying to light her up. Right. You know so what I mean? Impressive. So it doesn't matter if we were so friendly or not. It doesn't matter. I always would expect Conor McGregor, if, if I'm going to spar him, yes. to try to do that to me because I'm going to be looking to do that to him. That's how you improve the fighter. Mm -hmm. That's how you also work as a tandem as well. The sparring partners are brought in to make the fighter better. The only way you're going to make the fighter better is to sharpen his reflexes. How do you sharpen his reflexes? The element of danger sharpens your reflexes. If there is no danger, you're not going to really be, you're going to be a little casual with your defense. If your element of danger is there, now you're going to sharpen up a little bit and that gets you prepared for a fight. You have to mimic a fight situation as best you can. When do we see resolution to this? Uh, I don't know. You know, we've had talks. Uh, we had a little bit of talk. Then they kind of had distanced themselves a little bit. Yeah. I was starting to wonder yesterday, to be honest. I was hoping to meet with them yesterday, but it was just so so crazy. We didn't get to talk. Then I have found out about the interview. Yes. So I guess in the interview means I'm still going to get called out there at a certain point. I we'll think see. they need to bring Paulie in for his knowledge with boxing because he, he's going to see things that maybe Connor's team's not going to see. He has so much experience as a world champion. It, it's really important they bring Polly in. I think it's a huge mistake if they don't. And not just to spar or mess him up like they said. I think they bring him in for his knowledge. Well, I tell you, from when you talk about pound for pound, at one point Floyd Mayweather was pound for pound best fighter in the world as early as two years ago. This is a guy who came up in the hard streets of Michigan and really made a name for himself and set the boxing world on fire. But he comes from humble beginnings. Yeah, we knew I was the A side. That's why I say Mayweather first. We knew I was the A side. That's why this. I fight for many different things. I fight for myself. I fight for the money. I fight for legacy. Oh no, I'm good. I'm just saying good. I fight because I want to be the best. I fight because I want to go down in history as one of the best. That's the reason why I fight. When he was young, man, you, could, you, you can't believe what he was doing. I mean, this guy was destined to be a champion. Hey, do you have a, Raised you, in the gems of Grand Rapids, Michigan by his father ground, and his uncle Roger, Mayweather's talent was apparent at a very early okay. age winning his first of three Golden Gloves national titles Holy, at the age of 16. So for, first, I want to thank the good man upstairs for giving me this opportunity to win the, the national championship. 
And second, second of all, I want to thank my father. But that celebration was short-lived. For just a few weeks later, Floyd Sr., father and trainer, was sentenced to five years in prison. Everything in life happens for a reason. And that made me work hard and, and, push, and push myself to the limit. With his focus tightened, Mayweather turned pro and signed with Bob Arum and top rank promotions. When I went to top rank at that particular time, their whole focus was Oscar De La Hoya. So that's why we kept bumping heads, kept bumping heads. After a decade in the shadow of De La Hoya and under the control of Bob Arum, Mayweather bought himself out of the contract, shedding the name of Pretty Boy and adopting the moniker Money. Finally, when I got free and became my own boss, I'd done things my way. That's when we started doing record-breaking numbers, and that's what it's about. Money isn't everything. Money is the only thing. Yeah, Bobby. Some guys you love, some guys you hate. That's what sells tickets, and I'm here to sell tickets. You know, I'm a performer. That's what I do. I sell myself. Some people look at it as being an asshole. Some people look at it as being cocky. It was just a smart business move by a young kid from Grand Rapids. A hero and a villain all rolled into one. But everything always comes back to boxing. I worked my whole life to get to this point. I was destined to be where I'm at. Biggest name in boxing, even though he's been retired. It'd be almost two years in September. He's coming back, though, to take on Conor McGregor. And let me tell you something, folks. This place is swelling. Again, capacity crowd, 15,000. Originally, they wanted to start this press conference right now. But there are so many people still outside the gates. They want to give them the opportunity to come in and see these fighters. That's how much... These people are anxiously awaiting this fight, which is just really unbelievable. And I think one of the reasons why is because of the power and the skill set that Conor McGregor has. If he was just any other MMA fighter, you probably certainly wouldn't have a fight like this at this magnitude. Yeah. But because he's got that power and a skill set, he can throw from the shoulders. Thus, the reason why we have this fight. You can talk. Brendan, specifically about that power and how he's skilled with his hands. Yeah, for Conor McGregor, you know, the reason why he burst on the scene so fast because he was just knocking guys out. You know, his, his, his accuracy is what makes him special. His distance, he, he's able to get guys to do normally what they want to do. He gets them out of sync with his movement. And again, what makes him such a special, special fighter is his accuracy, and he predicts these things. Like with uh, Jose Aldo in 13-second knockout, there's video of him in the locker room previously before he went out there doing exactly and breaking down for his coach saying, this is how it's going to go. I'm going to hit him with this. I'm going to knock him out. He predicted this to a T. So, you know, yesterday when he goes, I'm going to knock him out in, in f under four rounds, you can't really laugh at that too much because he's been known to do this. He's, been known to, he's also been known to beat guys he probably shouldn't be beating. A Nate Diaz at 70, which is insane. Right. Uh, uh, Eddie Alvarez, who's a world champion Bellator, world champion UFC, fighting him in New York, a bigger guy, a grappler. People say you couldn't beat him. Uh, a Chad Mendes, who he took on a short notice, a grappler, who they said is going to give him a ton of problems. He murked that guy. Not only did he murk him, but he called it, said it was going to happen in the second round. You're dealing with Mystic Mac for a reason. <laughs> hey, I love it. Mystic Mac. Hey, I'm happy you brought up Aldo because I want to show the fans, take a look at the power, the knockout power of the notorious one, Conor McGregor. I want you to fight harder. I want you to fight clean. If you want to touch gloves, touch them now. Good. Step back. Let's, good luck. Big John had that one under control. Jose Aldo. Conor McGregor. The most highly anticipated featherweight fight of all time. Connor looks extremely loose, and Aldo looks like he's feeling the pressure of this moment. Here yeah. we go! Green trunks for the southpaw, the notorious Connor McGregor. Black trunks for the champion, Jose Aldo Jr. Connor relaxed and smiling. Oh! oh just he slapped him! Like that! Connor McGregor! It's the new UFC featherweight champion of the world! Oh, 
unbelievable. Oh my God. Unbelievable. The first punch he threw. Slept him. Wow. We're going to have to see that again. Did he throw a punch before that, or was that the first punch he threw? I think he went to throw a left and missed before that. So it might be the third punch he threw. But man. So there you saw the knockout power. And, and to me, when you watched that, what did you see as a boxer? When you looked at that, what did you see out of Conor McGregor? I saw some solid timing. I mean, he he, he kind of rocked back with his uh, straight left hand, and when, when uh, Aldo tried to throw that right hand, and he came over the top of it, and he timed him perfect. You know, he hit him, hurt him with that left hand, and then the rest of it was all that was all she wrote. You know, the, the viewers need to understand though. Uh, Aldo just isn't some schlub that walked in. The time a guy who's undefeated for ten years, you know, the king of the 145 pound division, a monster, a monster. A monster. But, you know, but, they, he, but he ran straight in. Yeah. You got to faint your way in. If you, to, to justify the distance, the gap you're going to give up to a taller guy, you need to faint your way in. You know why you that cannot, happened, Paulie? You cannot just run in. You know why that happened? What? Sorry to interrupt you. That, why okay. that happened is because Conor got in his head. That, Jose Aldo doesn't fight like that. He's a very controlled, not emotional fighter, very composed. During the press conferences, they did a world tour press conference. Nothing UFC's ever done before. It was insane all over the country, all over the world. All that. And for all that, and Connor got in his head so bad, Jose Aldo wanted to kill him. He was so upset, he rushed him, paid for it in 13 seconds. Yeah. Well, you, you know what? And that goes to a bigger point as to why we're here. Because I go back to maybe a couple years ago when Connor McGregor kind of made the statement Look, I want to fight Floyd Mayweather, and if I fight him, I would crush him. And I'm sure Floyd Mayweather, and even said it at the time, Money Mayweather said, I don't even know who the guy is. I mean, I don't even know who this is. Then all of a sudden, he's knocking guys out, and he's still calling out Floyd Mayweather, and then he's probably seeing, wow, this guy's yeah. pretty big. I, I, hey, I, I think saw this. this. I remember Floyd uh, didn't know, even know his name. He used to call him Gregor. Yeah. Him <laughs> but he, found, Gregor. He, he learned to add the Mick, Mick Gregor real yeah. fast. Yeah. Yeah. Once he started making himself noticed. Yeah. And, and listen, you go back to that point, to where we are here today and look at this look at the crowd that we have here behind us and that this could possibly be the biggest money generating fight of all time better bigger than what we saw in mayweather uh, pacquiao i would love to hear an argument that it's not gonna be i you know I, i've said it from day one this is gonna be the biggest sporting event in our in our lifetime especially my lifetime it's gonna it's gonna be bigger than the world cup uh, well, for pay-per-view, it's, okay. it's going to be Pacquiao Mayweather. I guarantee it. Okay, for that, you might be right, brother. Yeah. You know, I, I, I can see that, and I can see also, and also things like this are part of what aids that statistic. Because, again, Mayweather Pacquiao, there was no confrontational stuff right. at the press conference. Yes. Pacquiao is not that kind of a guy, personality-wise. We had one big press conference yesterday, and already people have just raised the energy to the way they talk about this fight. It was There's three more. Every There's platform. three more cities. From social From media. But then I'm yes. telling, I am telling you what's going to get people to go over the top and go nuts and go crazy with ordering, the weigh-in, bro. Yeah. The weigh-in always for a big fight is out of this world nuts, but the weigh-in for this fight, they're going to get each other's face. It's going to be trash talking. You're just one day away. Man, everyone is going to want to order this fight. Yeah, yes. Everyone. Let me Even the some. people that say they aren't, they're going to see the way they be like, all right, all right, baby. Well, I want to see this yeah. fight. I guarantee it. I want to see do, do you think we could see something like this again? Two boxers. Two boxers? You, you need polarizing personalities. You need polarizing figures, you know? Um, and then you need them to be successful. You, need, you know, it, 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 even in mixed martial arts, Conor McGregor is. Um, something out of this world, something that hasn't come along before, you know? So it's not just, it's not a situation where you're like, okay, you know, that you can only get this with a mixed martial artist and a boxer. Right. It's not so much that. It's, it's more so that McGregor's an anomaly. Mayweather's obviously become an anomaly in terms of the money he's made as well. Nobody Absolutely. else has made that kind of thing. So you've got two anomalies who came along at around the same time. Mayweather's a little older, but they're around that same time enough to make this fight. And what makes this a little bit more interesting is the anomaly who is the underdog is the younger, fresher guy. Right. So 
you know, you put age, the age factor into it, and you have an argument for McGregor. Not to say, you know, because boxing fans think it's blasphemous for the same McGregor to win the fight. Right. But age is age is age. Nature takes its course. There are things that slow you down a little bit. Is Floyd going to be a little more hittable? Maybe he still wins the fight. Is he a little more hittable? If Floyd's a little bit more hittable, even if he wins the fight, people are going to talk more about Conor McGregor after this fight than Floyd Mayweather. You know that, right? I mean, McGregor, if McGregor has any kind of success in this fight, people will talk about, yeah, Floyd Mayweather, but remember when Conor did this? Or remember that round when Conor did that? You know what I'm saying? So for me, the, there's more pressure on Mayweather to do this the right way, the way he's expected to do it. McGregor fell into a huge money fight, a huge situation where he's able to raise his profile tremendously and is less expected of him overall. To, the, to that point, though, I think with Floyd Mayweather, he can't fall into that trap because everyone goes, this is, the, this is the easiest money you've ever made, man. You just got to get in shape. This can be so easy. He's in for a rude awakening. He's just going to go in there, of do his thing, dance around 12 rounds if, and get out of there with an easy payday well, and not Floyd, get a mark Floyd on Floyd has face. to dominate. I see Floyd getting aggressive in this fight. You know, some people are going to disagree. I see Floyd fighting aggressively after a couple rounds. After a couple of rounds, and I don't see if I don't I don't see him coming out the gate right. and looking to walk Connor down. But I see after a couple of rounds, I see Floyd, my personal opinion. I see Floyd being aggressive. You in think this he fight. tries to get him out of there? I think he tries to beat on him. Yeah. yeah. I think after Oof. a couple of rounds, I think he will try to beat on him. That, which is why it's important which that is Connor exactly has what to Connor show. Wants. Which is also important because Connor wants that, but Connor has to show that in the first couple of rounds. To, has to show Floyd that yo man, it's not that kind of party. Yes. Floyd doesn't just go for that kind of fight. Unless he realizes the risk factor is lower, it's diminished, and then, okay, the risk factor is not there. I'm going to go for it. Floyd's not stupid. He's not going to come out the first couple of rounds, realize Connor's dangerous, and then start to walk him down. No. Floyd will only walk you down once he realizes, okay, I see what's going on over here. There's not much here. I'm going to start walking him down. Floyd's not stupid enough to go in there and go, ah, I know he's the bigger guy. I know he's knocked guys out, but that's MMA. I'm just going to go in there and rush him. There's no, 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 way. no, no, no. Not no round way. one. I don't even think round two. It's going to take a couple of rounds for Floyd to start figuring things out. at least four to five. See how... I wouldn't say four to five. But my opinion. I see how he's biting on the feints. See how he's biting on the probing shots. See how he he reacts to the one or two hard shots he may throw because you're not gonna throw very many hard shots. See what you're doing, and see how Connor's reacting based on the kind of reactions you get. If he's putting himself out of position, right. if he's reacting the wrong way, right. you start to up the ante yeah, a little yeah. bit. You start to throw harder. You start to become more aggressive. If Connor reacts the right way though, boy, he's gonna be down uh, the back. Boy, he's gonna be like, oh, all right, yes. all right. I gotta keep it defensive. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta keep playing chess with him. And, and it all depends on Connor. I agree. And let me nip this in the butt right now for all the viewers, especially boxing, when people go, "Oh, why, McGregor? He might just get dirty and throw a spinning elbow or a back kick." Can't. That's in his Can't. contract. Yes. He will get fined Absolutely. so much money; it's not even worth yep. it. Also, if you say that, you do not realize the kind of martial artist Conor McGregor is. He's not a dirty fighter. That is not in his persona to do that well listen if with this fight they're going to be fighting with 10 ounce gloves they're also going to be fighting at 154 pounds now you would think that would be right in conor mcgregor's wheelhouse that weight there that should suit him very well he usually fights at his best around that weight for floyd mayweather well the last time we saw him around that weight was against oscar de la hoya another fight that had at the time generated pay-per-view and money records let's take a look back at Floyd Money Mayweather against Oscar De La Hoya.
So that was Floyd Money Mayweather, Oscar De La Hoya. And that was one of the times we've seen him fight at this weight, basically 154, I think, Cotto, yeah, uh, Canelo. 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 So we've seen at, at 154, what kind of Floyd have you seen compared to when he fights at his regular welterweight at 147? Um, I still think it's a very uh, uh, very good fighter. I still think it's a, a very, very composed Floyd Mayweather. I think it was more to do with the size of the, his opponents. You know, Canelo's a big guy. Oscar De La Hoya is a big guy, you know. Those guys uh, gave him trouble based also on some of the size, as well as their skills. They're also very good fighters. So Connor's taller. He's going to be longer. Connor's taller. He's going to be longer. Connor used to fight at 145 pounds, though. So he's a guy who's coming up and who came up in weight as well. Granted, he couldn't make the weight any longer, but he came up in weight as well. So I don't think he's going to be super so much bigger than Floyd. He's definitely going to be the bigger guy. But if you look at Canelo and Oscar, you know, those are physically more, more imposing guys for me after seeing Conor yesterday. Interesting. And, you know, one of the things that we've heard from Floyd, especially after the press conference, he said, listen, yeah, this is definitely going to be my last fight. It's just so hard, training camp. Now, we heard some of that after the Berto fight. We heard that in the Pacquiao. Hey, it's hard training. I'm not as uh, the man I used to be 10 years ago. Fight. Is that just blowing smoke, messing with Conor McGregor? Um, you don't know. You don't know until he gets in the ring. I will tell you this. As you get older, you know, every day training, gets a little harder you know uh, you're, you're not as passionate about it you're not as uh, enthusiastic about training every day you get more injuries you're more injury prone in camp um at the end of my career i had a lot of injuries in camp where you know earlier on in, uh, in my career i would just breathe through very difficult training camps and without not without injuries so these these the a lot of it isn't so much the on fight night you can get yourself together one night a lot of it is the preparation is so difficult. It's so hard on your body. The and weight body, cut, Paulie? The weight cut is harder. Your body, you know, d d doesn't cut weight as good anymore. Then you're you put on some natural pounds because your metabolism slows down as you get older, you know? So, you know, there's a lot of factors here when it comes to getting older between the weight cut and being more inj becoming more injury prone. Your body just can't take the same kind of beating as it used to when you were younger. You know, even if you're a fighter who they talk about Floyd Mayweather, oh, he's a fresh guy. I love when I hear these kind of yeah. arguments. The fresh guy, he preserved himself. Preserve what, bro? <laughs> we all get old, bro. It's nature. We all get old, bro. Hey, there's nothing, <laughs> nothing you can do to, to stop nature. I'm sorry, guys. So, plus putting a, all that mileage on you in those yeah. training camps. Because no matter how, hard, how easy you make the fight look, training camp is difficult, man. Yeah. It's intense. You know, to make the fight easy, that means you've had a very intense training camp. You know, you, that's kind of the mentality fighters have. Yeah. Have a very intense training camp so, you, so fight night doesn't, it doesn't become so difficult for you. And if it does become difficult, you're prepared for it at least, both mentally and physically. So that's where aging hurts you. Preparation for the fights because you get injured. Now you all of a sudden have to diminish the amount of rounds you're doing in the gym and whatnot. Last couple of years of my career, yesterday I mentioned I always try to spar 125 rounds in a training camp. Last couple of years of my career. One way or another, I would get an injury in training camp. I'd have to stop sparring. I'd have to stop doing this or that. I'd, I'd wind up with much less rounds in sparring than I wanted to. You know, it, because once you get injured, now you don't want to pull out of the fight every second, right? So what do you do? You, you start cutting corners. You start not, you start to uh, take things out of your training that maybe you wouldn't have taken out before, you know? Because you got to get the fight night. You know, you gotta, you're going to go to show up on fight night in shape, but you're not going to be as intensely trained as you were before because you got to preserve your body to get there. Otherwise, you're not going to get there. Floyd so said he's been resting more than ever, too. Yeah. He, go, he goes, I've never taken so much rest between training sessions. We're usually, you know, we, you guys know Floyd better than anyone. That guy's a work yeah. workhorse. Night yeah. after night, 1 a.m. going on the long runs bike rides, all that stuff. Now he's saying he's kind of taking all that out because his body can't adapt and recover in time, it's which what? is a huge factor. It's it's 40, 40 is 40. I don't oh, care who yeah. hey, There's a reason why, why father time is, is still and, unbeaten and, when and, it comes to sports. And there's a saying we used to say in, in, in boxing, I don't know if they said it in mixed martial arts, as you get older, especially if you got a lot of fights, these guys yeah. with a lot of fights will actually add more mileage than taking damage. But Floyd hasn't had a ton of fights. He's had a lot of amateur fights, though those still count. You, as you get older, you work smarter, not harder. harder yeah. And and so I, I think Floyd is understanding that, but it gets frustrating because mentally, you know, you have a fight coming up. You want to be able to work hard, yeah. and when you can't, it starts to wear on your mind. So that's why you see this fight uh, being done at 154. So now let's go to Conor McGregor here, and let's talk about him at that weight. And, you know, listen, I would think as you talk about it, you know, it seems like me watching the, the few fights I've seen of his, that 147, smaller guy, I don't know, as explosive yeah. and as powerful yeah. as I see 
Conor McGregor in that 155 mark. Usually when I, I see that Conor McGregor, I'm like, whoa. No, you're absolutely right, Brian. At 55, Conor has his very best. When I heard this fight's at 54, I thought, brilliant. So you're telling me we got a chance. Because mm. at 45, <laughs> at, the little dumb, dumb dumb right. Right. <laughs> at 45, Conor was killing himself to make that weight. Although he was brilliant, he was the champion there, beat one of the best of all time in Jose Ada. At 55, if you saw what he did against Eddie Alvarez at Mass Square Garden, Man, that's when I was like, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm done doubting this kid. I am done doubting this kid. Because Eddie Alvarez, he's a Hall of Famer. He's on the Mount Rushmore. He's a Bellator world champion, UFC world champion, phenomenal grappler, can box. He's the underground king. You know, there's a lot of factors there that gave, which should have gave Conor a lot of problems. And he walked through this man. Well, I'm happy you brought that up because we certainly have some video. Uh, and let's show the, the fans that fight here. And why don't, you, why don't you walk us through it? And let's start with round two and what Conor McGregor did specifically uh, in yeah, this fight. Yeah, yeah, in this fight. The takeaway from this fight is he forced big Eddie round. Alvarez. Eddie Alvarez even said this. Going to the fight, he goes, I wanted to grapple more. I wanted to wrestle. I got in there, and I was kind of mesmerized by his movement. I couldn't get my timing. I couldn't get his distance down. He, he, he fought longer and taller than I thought. The way he moved, we couldn't mimic that in camp. He goes, so when I got in there, nothing would land. If you notice, Eddie Alvarez, all his shots are short here. He's not setting anything up. That's unlike Eddie Alvarez. The guy, again, he's a world champion for a reason. He did not like, look like a world champion in this fight. He can't land anything. Conor McGregor's calm. He's composed. Eddie Alvarez comes out super aggressive. And you see Conor, he has this tendency to get guys to calm down, to relax, to go to his rhythm. And when they do that, that's when that left hand comes out of nowhere. And you see in this fight, Eddie Alvarez, we've really never seen him get dismantled like this. This is Conor's first fight at 55. It's a huge stage. Remember, this fight was the first time the UFC was ever in Madison Square Garden. The entire nation of Ireland behind him. They're in New York. There's so much pressure on Conor in this fight. And the way he came out, hands behind his back, right. which you will see in the Floyd Mayweather fight. I guarantee he's going to do some of these antics. But in this fight, for him to do it at this level and against a guy in Eddie Alvarez who should be able to take him down, should be able to land shots, and he didn't have a chance. He just didn't have a chance. Connor definitely has a ton so there you see tools. the left hand. Now, there are a number of people who say with the 10-ounce glove, that'll take away some of the power. What do you think? Listen, the people keep saying, like, ah, 10 ounce gloves is not going to be the same power. Paulie, you know this better than anyone. That 10 ounce glove ain't much. When you put the wrap underneath there, it's like two clubs. And it, 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 it's 10 ounce, it's a lot, it's a more material. It's not that different than those four ounce gloves. And mixed martial artists, for, for all the boxing heads out there, like, Connor's never sparred before. That's all we do is spar in 10 ounce gloves, 16 ounce gloves. We're very familiar with those glove sides. It's not like he's gonna put them on and go, oh my God, what is this? Yeah. This is so strange, I've never done this before. No, yeah. no, he's very familiar with it. If you have knockout power with four ounce gloves on, you have knockout power with 10 ounce gloves on. It's your fighting style, it's the power, it's, it's your talent. That. It's also the way you're wrapping your hands. It's like a bat already underneath the glove. Yeah. And you're putting the glove over it. It's, it's, the glove is just basically just a wrap over the over the hand wrap that, that is it's basically like a little bat, you know what I mean? When they, when they tape that glove on, it's just, it's like, it, it sticks on you. You know, you, all you, you, you're you looking to punch through a wall. You know what I'm saying? You already feel that. So, you know, the whole thing of the weight of the gloves is a bit uh, overplayed, I think, because it's a lot of people don't understand that. You know, your average person will shoot a basketball, throw a football, you know, shoot, kick a soccer ball or whatnot. They won't understand what it's like to fight with four ounce gloves or 10 ounce gloves, have their hands wrapped in a certain way. Yeah. So they can't really, uh, um, uh, What's the word I'm looking for? They can't, they can't uh, envision, envision, grab, grab yeah, the concept. envision that and grab that concept. Mm -hmm. And so they, they're automatically making a lot of assumptions right. and guessing on what it's going to be. But I, I agree with Brendan. You know, with the, when, once you're wrapping the hand a certain way and the gloves come over you, man, you're going to have a sharp shot with a 10-ounce glove. It's going to hurt. Here's where the you. other advantage comes with a 10-ounce glove. You have more defense with, with the material of a boxing glove. Yes, you, which actually, open gloves. you can open the gloves, which actually helps Conor McGregor. He's not exactly known for his defense like Floyd Mayweather. So when this fight does happen, those 10 ounce gloves, that's an advantage for Conor. Because, listen, Conor does get hit. He will get hit. Even when he knocked out Jose Aldo, he did get hit with a hook. He's been touched before, you know, the Nate Diaz fight. So he's not known for being so elusive where he doesn't get hit. He will take some hits to land one because he's usually the harder puncher. Actually, so those 10-ounce gloves are actually going to help Conor McGregor in this fight. And it actually brings me to a, a – sets up a good point, Brendan, because when you're using the gloves for defense, especially in boxing, you're using them to cover, 
to block, you know, to open up glove the glove and, and cover. You're also using it to parry. You yeah. know, I don't know how much you're parrying in mixed martial arts. You're parrying a lot. You can use them open up and, 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 and push shots away, parry, catch. But you got to be careful with all that because you can be fainted out of position and parry air. Mm. I faint a jab at you. You may go to parry it and, it, and I come over with a left hook right. instead. And come around. You know what yeah. I mean? So these are all little techniques that I don't know how much they, they fall from MMA to boxing that in terms of defending yourself, you're defending yourself a little bit differently in boxing than you are in MMA. Also, I, I'm, I was watching that video right there with, with Eddie Alvarez. Eddie also has to brace for the kicks. There's no kicks coming in a boxing match. True. A lot of times when you fight in a southpaw, you're setting it up, you're hitting him on the arms, you're touching him on the glove, you're, you're throwing a lot of probing shots, you're doing a lot of this to your lead shoulder. I may touch you here and then here. You know what I mean? I go, bump, bump. You know what I mean? Like, I may so you got to understand if I'm just touching you here that it's not just that I'm doing nothing. I'm actually setting my distance. I'm setting my yes, range. Sir. A boxer understands what's going on if it's happening to him. Like, okay, this guy's trying to set his range. Let me let me offset that range. Does Conor McGregor understand the setting up of range being different in boxing than it is in mixed martial arts? And, 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 and that's what I've heard from different people. They always talk about that's why it's the sweet science. The science in boxing is just different from MMA. You don't you don't you disagree? No, it, it is different. It is different, but the, you know, the sweet science is part of mixed martial arts. We understand the sweet science, not to the level of, uh, you know, Paulie or Floyd Mayweather, but guys who are good at timing, who are accurate, especially a guy like Conor McGregor who's so dynamic, who downloads material very fast and brings it into the arena, into the ring. Man, He's bringing art to the science classroom. And when you bring art, especially with his talents, you have a real problem on your hand. And that's the X factor. And this place is packed. Yes. Packed. Yeah, listen. Uh, uh, kind of personality uh, just, too. Just, just think about when a we first bit. came on the air compared to where we are now. And you can just see behind me how this crowd has just swelled up. I mean, they've got people all the way up to the very back up in the yard here. This is a venue that holds 15,000 here, the Budweiser stage in Toronto. They call it the six, and the six god is here. Drake is even here. Drizzy's in the house. Drizzy is here. You had to show up for this. Just Come on. Start from the bottom. Now we're here, no, fellas. Here. Exactly. <laughs> what is going on? That just goes to show you how big this event is. He's going to be here as well. He's coming on the stage. This is really something. It just seems like every stop, it gets bigger and bigger here in Toronto we're going to Brooklyn going to your home tomorrow and then we end in London I mean this is just unbelievable that the amount of interest that these two combatants hold and have over these people it's so special man it is so special and people are showing up everywhere we go people are showing up in droves in droves it's not even the fight yet guys yeah. they're just talking about the fight exactly. they're showing up in droves no way this fight doesn't sell. And I, I remember when we did Mayweather Pacquiao, we always said we equated it to basically a Super Bowl on steroids. When you look at the amount of money that that fight generated, you look at the fanfare, you look at just the press conferences, the way in all of that stuff. Now, the action may not have been the best. Listen, if that fight's on steroids, this is Jose Canseco. <laughs> yeah, this, is, yeah, exactly. this thing is this another thing level. Is this, this. We got Bane out here. Yeah. This is a whole nother level. We got Barry Bonds up in here. Yeah, this thing is to, uh, to another level, man. Let's take a look back at Mayweather versus Pacquiao. Round 11.
So Mayweather Pacquiao, of course, that took place at the MGM Grand Garden Arena there in Las Vegas. That was around 11. That one went the distance. Floyd Mayweather walking away with a victory. 49 and all looking to go 50 and 0 against Conor McGregor. That's interesting. Round 11. Listen, MMA, three rounds, five minutes, 15 minutes, basically. Yeah. Full fight. You got, you're talking about basically 36 minutes. How about conditioning? Is Conor McGregor, do you think, built to go the distance? Because I'm trying to think back. I think Diaz, yeah, we fought Nate at Diaz, 170. Yeah. He looked gassed. He had some cardio issues in that fight, and that, that's going to be the knock. And, you know, the naysayers and go, man, I don't know if Conor can go all 12 right. rounds because he, he struggled with cardio with Nate Diaz at 70. The key word there is at 170 70. pounds. That is not normal for Conor McGregor. That is a bigger weight for him. He's going against a bigger guy, a naturally a bigger guy. And also, he wasn't familiar. Again, that was new territory. He was trying to get him out in the first, second round, trying to throw pow all too. power. That was at too. 54, he doesn't have cardio issues. At 45, he doesn't have cardio issues. So you can get rid of that. It's also the kind of pace you're fighting, though, Brendan, right? I mean, 100%. He, came out fight, he came out so fast out of the box against Nate. He was always doomed to gas out if he didn't get him out of there, you know? Um, so it won't he have to start fast? It makes fast? me think about this fight won't as well. Won't he have to start yeah, fast though yesterday, this fight? Yesterday, what he said, I'm going to get him Floyd out by four. If he really attempts to get Floyd out in four rounds, man, come out of the box faster than you would think a regular boxer would come out of. And if he doesn't get him out of there, is round six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve going to be very difficult for him? Does he get stopped just on the fact that he can't defend himself anymore from guessing out? It's one of the question marks in there, depending on how fast he starts early in At the fight. At 54, though, you know, I'm not too concerned about it. I, I think if Floyd is doing damage, going the body early, that might have some effect on his cardio. But physically, can he go 12 rounds? 100%, he definitely can. You know, you don't sign up for this magnitude of a fight, and there's going to be some cardio issues. The only time we've ever seen cardio issues was at 170. That's not an argument. You don't have an argument there. He's a true professional. He's on this stage for a reason. And at, 50, at 154, you're not going to have those same issues. The other thing, too, we keep saying, you know, Connor at 54, you got to start fast, get him out of there in four rounds. Listen, Floyd, he's not a fast starter, man. And, you know, all, boxers like to take the time, download the download the data, course, field but, guys but out. He's defensively sharp. Defensively sharp two years ago. He's 40 now. He's not as active. You got Connor. Man, I don't care who you are, and he's knocked out tougher guys than Floyd Mayweather. I hate to tell you, fellas, he's mm. knocked out some pretty tough guys in this world. Not in the boxing world, but in my world. So if that left hand does land, I promise you, Floyd Mayweather will have some serious issues. How much yeah. is that? No one's really I, arguing I want, that. Let me, but let me I want, I, you made a point there about going to the body. I see Floyd going to the body a lot. This he fight. does. He has a spearing I, but, jab. But, but I also think it's almost like um, if he gets aggressive, which is like I said, I feel like he's going to get aggressive at a certain, at a certain point. He started breaking Judah down to the body. Remember Judah threw that yep. low blow late in the fight? Yeah. Boy was breaking him to the body. He was wearing him out. And Judah just had a foul He's, him to get absolutely. himself a break. I feel like when Floyd does become aggressive, he looks to break you to the body. Floyd's offense is very underrated because he varies it so well. And when he gets confident enough that you can't pose a threat anymore, he assaults you to a higher level. And that variation is even harder to defend. He gets nasty that's, too, Polly. People yeah, forget. He gets dirty, like, I know, he gets, I know. You know, he's out there and he, he's doing all this. That's one of the that's one of the things right there. The, the dirty stuff. You know, people always think Connor's gonna be dirty. Connor's gonna be this subtle dirty stuff. Floyd does. Connor's gonna have to learn to not only deal with it, but try to figure out a ways to do it back to where people aren't gonna be too hard on him because he's a mixed martial artist. He's not supposed to be dirty at all. Every fighter is dirty. It's a fight. What? We're fighting. In what? a ring, in a cage, like we're what? fighting. If you try to get away with give, give, little give, things, give me, give me, give pushing me your head, especially righty versus lefty, a lot of times you're pushing the guy's head down and hitting them over the top. You know, uh, a lot of times driver punches come into play because, you know, your, your, your lead hand's on the same side. You're, just, you're, you're rolling your shoulder a certain way. Kidney shots come into play the same way. Connor can't do any of that. If Connor even goes for that, there's he can get ways, a warning, things get a flag. There's ways to disguise it, and that's one of the things when nah, you're out tough. of your league here because... I'm sure mixed martial artists know ways to disguise dirty stuff in their sport. True. Boxers know how to disguise dirty stuff in our sport. Boy knows how to disguise dirty stuff to not make it look so authentic, to not even, make it look so in your face to where the referee's like, yo, buddy, what are you doing? Even if he does Connor, go, Polly, they're going to let Floyd get away with a lot more because it is boxing. Because we, we assume the, the general public, the boxing public, they, you guys assume Connor's going to be dirty, which I promise you he's not. Right. No, so don't. there's going to be a zero tolerance policy, and he knows that. And that, that ref in that ring, man, I, I hope it's a guy who at least is open-minded enough to, to know that 
Connor needs to work too, man. It can't be just about Floyd yeah. and those boxing rules. You got to give him a fair shot. Well, I'll say this. You know, we in, in boxing, we saw Jeff Horn uh, be rough with uh, uh, Manny Pacquiao. A lot of dirty stuff in there. Uh, we see Sean Porter is a guy who's very physical and uh, gets away with a lot of stuff. And a lot of it is dirty. Yeah. Andre Ward. Uh, Andre Ward even did, uh, did a lot of the cold fight. You do what you get away with. Some of it is more subtle than others. Other, other, some things are more subtle than other things. There's ways to be more subtle, and then there's guys that aren't so subtle. It's up to the referee to do his job. My experience, 44 professional boxing matches. For the most part, the referee should have paid $1,000 for a ringside seat. Mm. For the most part, You say you don't need them at all? For the most part, you don't do anything. Well, I mean, I, I've been constantly, I have been time, and look, Kovalev didn't need him, right? I mean, there was nothing oh, going man, on. Did he ever need him? What, what I'm saying is, what, he needed him, but what I'm saying yeah. is, but what I'm saying is, you, that's when you tell the referee, buddy, why don't you sit ringside, bro? You do, all you're doing is taking up space in here. I see you know what, what you're I mean? For the most part, that's what I've seen in my experience as a boxer. You know what I mean? All kinds of stuff happens. I remember early in my career, I'd look at the ref, I'd get buttered or something. I'd look at the ref like, and he wouldn't even look twice. He'd just be like, right. You know, and I'd be like, at a certain point, you're just like, all right, whatever, dude. These guys are just here to watch the fight from a, the closest seat in the house. This, don't get me wrong. Being a referee is not an easy job. Right. I'm, I'm not trying to be a, a, a cynic here and, right. and, and kill off all referees. It's a hard job to do because you're trying to enforce the rules, but you're also not to try, try not to kill all the action. You right. also got to know your balance. fighter, yes. right? You also yes. got to know the fighter. Like, and it's hard to know Connor in a boxing ring because he's never done it before. Yeah, but you got to give him the benefit of the doubt that he's not a dirty guy and flag him if he does something that maybe he wasn't aware of or maybe it's something that Floyd has forced him to do. So you got to give him the benefit of the doubt. But also, that ref has a huge job come August 26th because we've never, you're right, we've never seen Connor, but also he has to know both guys. That, that, being a ref in boxing is the hardest job in sports. It really is. You're, you're damned if you do, damned if you don't. But you got to know who is in the ring. you got to know if the guy's in trouble. Connor's a bigger guy. Connor has a hell of a chin. So if he gets rocked, don't stop the fight early. Nah, don't let, let yeah. him fight through it. you got to know certain things about the fighter and let him fight through it. Part of getting rocked when guys stop fights, when guys are rocked, is more what's been happening before that. Has he already been assaulted before that? Because right. a lot of times if the fight is pretty even or whatnot and a guy gets rocked, you don't stop it right away. But if he's been assaulted for a few rounds in a row, now he's rocked, and the referee jumps in a little quicker because he's like, all right, you're already, you already just getting, uh, getting beaten Sable. down yeah, a couple Sable. of rounds. You know what I mean? So now you get rocked on top of it. You're like, yeah, you know, let me step in. So also getting rocked is also in the perspective of the moment it's happening. There's, you know, you're getting rocked in an even fight, okay? You're getting rocked in a fight where all you're doing is catching a beating. Referee might be able to jump in a little sooner. And that's up to the referee's discretion the, to understand that. The judges have a hell of a job, too, because these judges have to look at Conor McGregor, and if he's being the aggressor, if he's moving a certain way, you know, and, and he's winning rounds. Well, it, it's listen, tough to score for we, these guys. Hey, you, you saw in Pacquiao and Horn. There were a number of people who thought Pacquiao won it, but those judges felt like Horn was the more aggressive fighter, and they gave him the win. So that can always go both ways. Hey, the beauty of us, especially after when this press conference is done, both of the fighters are going to join us. We're going to sit right here. We're going to talk with Floyd Money Mayweather. We're also going to talk with Conor McGregor. So I'll come to you here, Brandon. Um, how does Conor McGregor win this fight? How does he do the unthinkable? How does he shock the world, so to speak? As you take a look at this crowd, I mean, look at the people here at this Budweiser stage in Toronto. Capacity, 15,000 people, and we are near capacity here. How does he win this fight? You know, you know what he does? Exactly what he's been doing. He doesn't switch it up. He doesn't try to become a boxer. He doesn't do anything out of the ordinary. He keeps doing what got him to the dance. You don't come to the dance with a salsa routine and then just start break dancing. You keep doing salsa. So for him, it's about his timing, his accuracy, and get in, get in Floyd's head. Get him to come aggressive and make some mistakes, which is easier said than done with one of the greatest boxers of all time. But he has a chance to do it. If anyone can do it, it's Conor McGregor. And those opening rounds, when Floyd's trying to figure him out, trying to get his rhythm, you're going to see some openings. And he has got to strike where that iron is hot. Because if there's an opening on Floyd, you're not going to get it ever again. Floyd knows this. He's too smart for it. So if there is a, a hint of an opening, he has to capitalize on it, has to do it early. Otherwise, as the rounds go on, Floyd's going to take over like a storm, like he's like he's known for doing the world-class boxers. Yeah, and then a lot of that goes to film study, too, because there are some things, that, subtle things that Floyd Mayweather does in the ring where you think he's taunting the other guy, but really he's resting. Yeah. And you're giving him that opportunity to rest. So the conditioning's going to have to be on point and really pressure him. So how does Floyd Mayweather win this fight? Okay, well, Floyd tactically. Mayweather, obviously, tactically, from a tactical standpoint, it's, it's probably blasphemy for even me to tell him how he's going to win the fight because Floyd knows more than me what he's got to do to win the fight. But here's the thing. 
Floyd pretty much gives us a pretty distinct pattern though, over the course of his career. It takes a couple rounds to figure you out. You know, not take too many chances early on. Early on, at 130 pounds, he used to take some more chances. He was a more aggressive. But since then, take not take too many chances. See what's going on with you. See how you're reacting to certain punches. See how you're reacting to certain moves he's making. One of the things we haven't talked about yet, Floyd gives you so many different looks. Besides all the feints he gives you, Floyd changed the look a million different ways. He'll give you this look. He'll give you this look on the front foot. He'll give you this look on the back foot. He'll give you the shoulder roll. He'll do a lot of different looks. Part of why you change the looks, here's a couple reasons why you change looks. Number one, you change the target for the opponent. So if I'm fighting you and you're giving me a different look, now I have to reprocess the new look to see for the new opening. Now mm. you're giving me different looks. That's one of the things. Number two, how do you react every time I change the look? Does it take you a second to re recover, to, to realize what's going on? You, you start backing up out of confusion? You get aggressive out of confusion? These are things that your, the computer is starting to process every time you change the look. You know, what are you doing? Now I'm fainting off the look. Every single look I give you, I have to be able to punch off of it. Floyd Mayweather is a master. He can punch off every look he gives you. Some guys change the look and you know what happens? They can't punch off certain looks they're giving you. So it's an illusion. Floyd makes it so he can punch off every look he's giving you. So every look he's giving you, you have to not only have to reprocess it, but now you have to also reprocess what's coming at you from that different look, from that different angle. So once he's processing all this stuff, Depending on the reaction he sees from Connor, he gets aggressive or he boxes him on the back foot. To me, I don't know that Connor has the enough experience to understand all these things. And once Floyd realizes that, he's gonna start getting aggressive, he's gonna start going to the body, because let's face it, a, a lackluster decision for Floyd Mayweather in this fight, probably not gonna get the job done in people's eyes. Probably not gonna get the job done as far as avoiding criticism. Probably not gonna be appreciated by very many people. I think Floyd even knows that. I think in order to become aggressive, he's got to process all these things that he does, re then realize where Connor's coming up short, and from there, take advantage with aggressiveness. And go to the body. I see him going to the body. Can, well, can I ask you guys a question? Sure. What happens if Connor knocks him out in the third round? What happens? It's got to be one shot. It's got to be a one shot, not one shot. Because even if he hurts him, Floyd's going to survive. We've seen him survive. He holds. Shane Bones will be on you know, it's a while He's got to catch him. Gotta catch him with a with one a one shot a clean knockout. Shot. Yeah, a one shot knockout. But that's like hitting the lotto. You know what I mean? Like, that's like you know, the lotto? That's like hitting the lotto. Hitting the one a one shot no, the to lotto? say because Brendan, to say, okay, to, to make that your plan going into a fight, to make going into a fight of this magnitude, you can't make that your plan. No, I agree. You can't, you can't just say plan. I'm gonna go in there and hopefully I have a puncher's chance. Yeah, but, you know, you gotta have something deeper than that. Yes. Floyd, what you guys? How often yes, but how often does Floyd get hit clean? Because to hit him clean, number one, it's a little bit of luck, but also to hit him clean, you have to be able to disguise the punch. Boy, you know how Shane Mosley hurt Floyd Mayweather? He shot a jab to the body, got Floyd's guard to drop, got Floyd's eyes to drop, and boom, Ooh, came shit. over the top. We used to call that in the gym a rooftop. Yeah. You start here and you come over the roof. Look at Zab Judah. Yes, but does that always work? You gotta, you gotta time that right, because sometimes that jab to the stomach comes, you know what happens? Your opponent steps back. You gotta catch, you gotta make that, Shane Mosley had to time that rooftop in a way to when he did it, he had to know Floyd was gonna hold his ground. If Floyd doesn't hold his ground when that jet to the stomach comes, Floyd steps back, that, he's out of range to throw that right hand. He caught it in the moment when Floyd held his ground. You're also so talking about a younger luck. Floyd. You're talking yes. about a younger Floyd. Conor, you're talking about a younger Floyd, but, but you still this? have to disguise it. You how about still have this? to disguise it. How is Connor as a finisher? Because when you talk about that Mosley right hand, he got hit and held on, remember? Yes. He held on to yes. try to, yes. to gain time and get his yes. faculties back. And then kind of took control. Because if you remember, he had Mosley so messed up, Mosley didn't even want to throw the rest, of, the rest yeah. of that fight. Yeah. He took I that away from him. And the same thing with Pacquiao. Pacquiao hurt him in that fourth round. Remember Come Floyd? on, he didn't hurt him. Well, he, went to, he, he touched went, him. He went to, yeah, he, hey, went to hey, he hit the lottery. Yeah, he hit the lottery. He went to the ropes. But then all of a sudden, Pacquiao yeah, got listen, cautious. Listen, listen. Sometimes a guy gets so aggressive, that you'll take a few steps back to try to control him. Okay. Sometimes, and not just because a punch lands doesn't mean you're hurt. Getting hurt is very obvious. So right. When a guy's hurt, we all know he's hurt. Sometimes guys get hit, and you see them back up, you see them hold. Why am I holding you after I get hit sometimes? Or why am I backing off after I get hit sometimes? It's not that I'm always hurt. If I'm hurt, you can tell I'm hurt. It's because I, you heard the crowd go jumping crazy when you landed that shot. You might think you have me hurt. You might go crazy. So how do I lower your energy? Because I don't want you to get all crazy on me. I want I want the energy to stay where it's at. So I'm gonna go for a walk. Or I'm gonna go. I'm gonna hold you. Yeah. Doesn't always mean I'm hurt. In that particular situation, I just think Floyd want to take a step back to lower, diminish the energy of it. Having said that, again, 
Connor is used to fighting mixed martial arts rules. When he spin, when he hurts a guy, he just throws all these punches. He doesn't though, Paulie. To that to that point, what what Connor does really well when he sees the guy hurt, because the he doesn't rush important. in. He stays composed and breaks him down. Looks for that next but there's big a shot. There's a balance to being composed because if you wait too long, the opportunity, the window closes. You have to be because composed. Because history is one of the best finishers we've ever seen. We're getting to the to the point where both the fighters are getting ready to come out. This is but not nice. He's part of the OBO team. Drake's record label. Here he is. Let's take a listen. I've been on so many flights. It's like my record's clear now. AKA the man. AKA I never ran. Don't make me turn this red light on your head like you rock head. Only talk to bosses, not the second in command. Bring it. Talk to me. You better have a plan. Cause they don't have a cure for all my pain. AKA it's not nice and I live up to my name. Boy, are you insane? I drink honey when I shoot my pistol at the range. That way, when I'm fancy, I still know I got my aim. AKA, it's not nice, and it's not a fucking game. Yeah, yeah, you and I are not the same. Posted like he fuck, I got your wife, he running brains. She was there with boy to keep my front door off the frame. She said, I look like Usher when I'm trapping in the rain. I wanna see you doing this, girl. Trap, trap. Trap. himself Mystic Mac, but he is the notorious Conor McGregor. Now I'm going to ask you guys your opinion. August 26th, live on Showtime pay-per-view, T-Mobile Arena Las Vegas. Who's going to win the fight? Will it be Floyd Mayweather? Or is it going to be Conor McGregor? We expect you to make some noise when the guys make their way to the stage in less than five minutes. I got something special for you guys. I'm sorry, pass along the message. Bling, it's all you. So there you have it. Both the fighters are at the venue. They're ready to walk here on stage. Give me some final comments here. What are you expecting? 
Hey, man, I expect more fireworks. I yeah. ex now both guys know what they're getting into. Yesterday, you know, it was kind of the, uh, you're walking into the unknown. Today, they're walking into the known, yeah. and they're going to be ready. What do you think? I I'm expecting a huge counterpunch from Conor McGregor. I think this is his show, and I, I think it's his to lose. I expect a way better version of Conor McGregor in selling this fight. I think Floyd did a great job leading this thing off. He hit a home run in L.A. Tonight's Connor's night, and I think he's going to win the next few states as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like a, it's like an election here. Exactly. Going All red states. There were some great lines. Conor McGregor said he was going to take Floyd Mayweather out within four rounds. Floyd Mayweather said, the only thing God made perfect is my boxing record. It will stay perfect on August 26th. Let me tell you something. This crowd is ready. It is jam-packed here at the Budweiser stage here in Toronto, and they are ready to hear from the money man, Floyd Mayweather himself, and the notorious one, Conor McGregor. As soon as it's over, we will have a post-show. But look, I told you, the sixth god is here. Drizzy Drake has now taken the stage. Listen, I'm going to be honest. I came here today to witness history with each and every one of you. The biggest fight in the history of fighting. And of course, they had to come to the greatest city in the world to do a press conference, of course. So, whether it is Floyd Money Mayweather, or whether it is the notorious Conor McGregor, I just want to welcome these two fighters to Toronto, a place that we love till the day that we are all gone. My name is Drake. I love each and every one of you. Let's get into this shit! this place the six he calls himself the six god hey you know it's gotta be big in toronto and drizzy comes out running yeah. through the six <laughs> with my woes <laughs> <laughs> but what is going on man i tell you every stop it is something big you can't get it can't get any bigger than drake here in toronto so you know he's here and listen we're gonna have him on too for the post uh, He wasn't wrap -up. even scheduled to be here. Uh, this morning, it, 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 he goes, hey, man, I want to come through. They, you, No one knew. Everybody That's how big this here. event is. If, if you're in town there and this, when this event comes your way, it's like the circus. Everybody wants to see it. <laughs> Who's coming to New York? Here we go. The fighters are here. Let's get it started. This is the second stop of Mayweather versus McGregor. I'm going to stay at the top, do what I want to, because when you speak boxing, you speak in Mayweather. I'm gonna be ruthless in there. My fist is just gonna break his whole face, and that's it. You got MMA fighters calling me out. Man, stay in your lane. Let's not kid ourselves here who the big star is at this show. You got me, a slick, handsome Irish kid, and has climbed to the top of the game quicker than anyone else has done it. This is not like a normal fight. It's big, big business. Conor McGregor has said he will now turn all of his attention to fight only one man, and that is Floyd Money Mayweather. <laughs> I'm always looking to make history every single day. The first man ever to hold two titles simultaneously. And here we are again, more history. This just puts it even more in stone. No one's even came close. I'll be immortalized after this. No fighter in the history has done what Floyd Mayweather has done. All I ever thought about was winning. So that's all I know. When there's nobody there to separate, he's gonna break. They fighting every day, they in the gym every day. These fighters still can't beat me. When I hit a person, they don't escape. It's not about who hit the hardest. It's about who has the will to win more. I, I see it in my head, and then it happens. Oh, slept on. It's gonna be familiar. Because I already know that I can face anything. I know how to fight. 
I know how to win. I'm God gifted. I hold this entire game in the palm of my hand. It's never personal for me. It's always business. It's over before it even begins. When it comes down to boxing, I'm the best at this. He's a two-division world champion. And he is the fighting pride of Dublin, Ireland. Conor McGregor is a knockout artist. Every time he touches guys, they fall. No one in this boxing game knows what's coming. I'm gonna stop, Floyd. You're all gonna eat your wounds. The whole world is gonna eat their wounds. Long, rangy, dangerous with every hand. I'm gonna teach him about true fighting. I'll be immortalized after this one. This is why everyone's been talking about Conor McGregor. It's all over. This kid's the real deal. Oh, big shot by McGregor. That's it. Conor McGregor. We're not here just to take part. We're here to take over. He heard about that. Tonight belongs to Conor McGregor. Oh! He slapped him just like that! Conor McGregor, featherweight champion of the world! I'll get the second world title, raise them up consecutively. He got tagged, he's hurt. That's it. The first man ever to hold two titles simultaneously. Call me Mystic Mac because I predict these things. Every single person doubt me. Doubt me now. To Toronto with a record 21 wins, three losses. He is the former UFC featherweight and the reigning, defending UFC lightweight champion of the world from Dublin, Ireland. Please welcome the notorious Connor McGregor. Pacquiao, they say, who is that? They say, that's the guy that we trying to get to fight Floyd Mayweather. When they say Floyd Mayweather, they say, that's an all-time great. Money isn't everything. Money is the only thing. Hard work, Marcus! Hard work, Marcus! You already know I only come around once in a lifetime. the motherfucking lights and his lights camera action. I do everything better than every boxer. Everything. Never 
probably never complain, just work. I will always find a way to win. to this point and no one is taking this away from me TBE ladies and gentlemen Toronto presenting Floyd Money Money, 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 money
Toronto! What's up, Six? You ready for the fight? You ready for McGregor? Are you ready for Money Mayweather? August 26, it all goes down. The world will witness an unprecedented matchup. It's a fight you, the fans, wanted. We're going to give you the fight you want. The attention has already generated remarkable response. We want to thank you for coming out. How about Drake coming out? This is just the second stop of a whirlwind four city global tour is stretching from Los Angeles to London, reaching fight fans around the globe, online, television networks worldwide. And it all goes down Saturday, August 26, the T-Mobile Arena in the fight capital of the world, Las Vegas, Nevada. It's promoted by Mayweather Promotions. And this event will be distributed to you live on Showtime Pay-Per-View. Up first, market leader, he's played a key role in bringing groundbreaking boxing matchups, delivering them to really the biggest and the broadest possible audience ever. Along with Floyd Mayweather and Mayweather Promotions, he's been instrumental in delivering the biggest pay-per-event events of all time. So please, welcome the Executive Vice President, General Manager of Showtime Sports, Mr. Steven Espinosa. On behalf of Showtime Pay-Per-View, as well as our partners, Mayweather Promotions UFC and McGregor Sports and Entertainment. We thank all of you for joining us here tonight. We are excited to come to Toronto, and you guys have not disappointed. It's an amazing turnout. We're glad to be here. Very shortly, you're going to hear from the two biggest stars in combat sports. Boxing legend, pound for pound number one, pay-per-view king Floyd Mayweather, and the only two-division world champion in the UFC, worldwide superstar Conor McGregor. It's no exaggeration to say this is an unprecedented event, once-in-a-lifetime matchup between two of the biggest stars and the biggest personalities in all of sports. We're bringing these fans, these fight to you fans in unprecedented ways. We're thrilled to be here. With that, I'm going to introduce our two stars. Very shortly again, you'll hear from them, Floyd Mayweather. He turned pro in 1996, 49-0, undefeated, 24 world champions, 24-0, five different weight classes, the highest paid athlete in the world three separate times. Over his career, he's generated 20 million pay-per-view buys, $1.3 billion in revenues, and your fan favorite, Conor McGregor, who says he is the future of combat sports on August 26th. We will find out. It will be a sporting event unlike any that we've seen. Do not miss it. Thank you. Toronto! Next to the podium, the man is an innovator. He put the UFC on the map! Instrumental in the meteoric rise and fame of Conor McGregor!
He's contributed to making this historic event happen. He is the president, El Jefe, of the UFC, Dana White. Thank you. What's up, Toronto? How are you today? So when we were putting this deal together, I told these guys, you don't do a world tour without stopping in Canada, baby. And as usual, you never fail to deliver, you guys. We love you very much. All right, let's get the show started. The reigning, defending, 155-pound champion of the UFC, the notorious Conor McGregor! Does this mic work? Well, then, fuck that mic. On the count of three, I want everyone in this arena to scream at the top of your lungs, fuck the Mayweathers. One, two, three. No, 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 no. We can do better than that. When I count to three, I want this entire arena to scream, fuck the Mayweathers. One, two, three, fuck the Mayweathers. He won't do shit. Do fucking nothing. And while we're at it, fuck Showtime too. You little weasel. Look at you, you little fucking weasel. I can see it in your eyes. You're a fucking bitch. You fucking weasel and you fucking bitch. They're trying to set me up at every turn out here. They're trying to catch me off guard. Trying to see me in an uncomfortable position. But I thrive in uncomfortable positions. There is nothing these can do to phase me. 28 years of age. I'm getting fight checks and promoter checks. When Floyd was 28, he was on Oscar De La Hoya's undercard. And that's just facts. Watch out to run down. Watch up, Ireland! <laughs> Floyd is an old, weak bitch. Sing it to me. I want you to sing it to me, and I want you to dance for me. You sing it, you dance. Dance for me, boy! Fucking leaving. <laughs> 50 strippers on his payroll, this man has. What the fuck is he doing with that strip club? What the fuck? 50 stripper bitches on his payroll. Shout out to all the stripper bitches on his payroll. At least Rob Kardashian only had one. He has 50. I'm not getting off this mic. I want him to come and take this mic off me. Otherwise, I'm taking over this whole shit. It's right here. 
It's right here. Stop me. You won't do shit. Toronto. Toronto, what a fucking city. What a city. What a city. I was here two, uh, the last, I was here one time, two years ago, three years ago. I was also on a world tour. I was also facing an unconquerable quest. I was facing the then pound for pound number one fire on the planet, Jose Aldo. They said the same things then as they're saying now. They said I had no chance. They said I'm in over my head. They said he kicks too hard. Too many weapons. The Irish man's gonna fall short, he doesn't stand the hope. It took me 13 seconds. I just want to speak to all the boxing pussies, all the little punda pussies, supposed experts. You're fucking crazy if you think this man stands a chance. <laughs> His head is too small. One shot is all it takes me. Check the facts. I bounce shots off the I bounce heads off the canvas and dribble that shit. He tip top toes to a decision. He's never even fought a day in his life. He's a runner. He's boxing's biggest bitch. Shout out Drizzy Drake. Started from the bottom, now I'm here. Life is so fucking good. How do I look? What the fuck is he wearing? He looks like a little break dancer or something, a little 12 year old break dancer, bitch. What the fuck? He's 40. You're 40 years of age. Dress your fucking age. Carrying a school bag on stage. What are you doing with a school bag on stage? You can't even read. 40 years old carrying a school bag. The man doesn't even fucking read. Toronto, I love you all. Thank you all so much. It's an honor for me to come here. It's a fucking honor. I love each and every one of you. Showtime executives, just know no matter what situation you put me in, I always come out on top. Whoppa! Yo, Toronto, I'm telling you, this fight's gonna be something. Coming to the stage, he's the longtime advisor of Floyd Money Mayweather, Chief Executive Officer of Mayweather Promotions. Yo. The brother can dress, I gotta give him that. Leonard LMA! And this time, the record speaks for itself. He's the best to ever do it. Toronto! Yes! None other than Former 12-time world champion in five different weight classes. The highest paid athlete ever. TBE. The man who's going to kick his ass. Let's give it up, Toronto, for none other than Floyd Money Mayweather!
Ganze zieht. Two sugars. Two sugars, bitch. One thing we do know, one thing we do know. One thing we do know. The fucking fans can't fight for you. Shut your fucking mouth. We're not talking about being at the top one year, two years, three years, four years, motherfucker, 21 years. Yeah, and they said, I'm the motherfucker that can't read. Bitch, I do numbers, I make money. You know my middle name, bitch. You owe money. I do. Be that. Let me see the bag. Yeah, he was right. Yeah. The bag got books, and we gonna show you what the books look like. If you believe in yourself, like you say you believe in yourself, bitch, your whole fight check, you bitch. No fucking problem. Send the contract, kid, it's done. Let me see what it looked like. Peter, grab me one, let me see what it looked like. See if this bitch wanna bet this. Do what you're told, bitch. Do what you're told, bitch. You know. You know. <laughs> I'd hate that book. <laughs> you know, I like you. You know. You love me. You fucking Egypt. You fucking Egypt. That's the fuck you are. You punk. This your boss, you little bitch. And y'all got the fucking nerves to believe in a fucking fighter that like to fucking quit? There's a fucking quitter. Turn the pressure up. I don't quit. I don't fold under pressure. I'm the best, and I know I'm the best. Bitch, and you know I'm the best. Don't y'all ever tell me shit about a fucking three million dollar fighter. Not no more. Yeah, we just getting heated up. Dana. 
I can never disrespect you. I've known you for 21 years. You've done a hell of a job with this company. And I want to continue to watch you grow. I want to, I want to watch you continue to build the UFC because it's all about combat sports. You've done a hell of a job. No matter what I said about you in the past, as a man, I look in your face and apologize and tell you I'm sorry, but you've done a hell of a job with this company. Showtime! August 26th, it's showtime! Yeah! Yeah! We heating up now, baby! Yeah! They all said I was too, they say I was too small. They say I run like a bitch, but God damn it, 49-0. Yeah, motherfucker, I'm running into the motherfucking bank. Oh, and I love what I got on. I'm wearing that Toronto flag. I look good in that Toronto gear. Yeah. Yeah, I feel good. I'm 40, but I look 20. And you act him. Yeah. Hey, he told me. Hey. You see, I'm not going to go there. I'm going to go there in the last press conference. I ain't going to go there right now when we talk about females. Because we, we already know. We already know this bitch right here, he like to quit. What the fuck is that? What the fuck is that? Talking about how tough you is. Talking about you got pride in you. Talking about you are killers. Real killers don't quit. Real killers don't quit. You've never even, you don't even know nothing about true fighting. You've never been in there. You're against little boxes of Flav. You're against a different animal here, Floyd. Shut the fuck up, bitch. Shut your mouth. Shut the fuck Shut up. Shut your mouth. They want you off this stage, you man. your turn. You're balancing brothers, brothers yourself up there. You do something with that flag, I'll fuck you up. There's about it. That's it? That's it? There's about five grand in here. There's about five grand in here. Fuck me. Just now you do something with that flag. You ain't getting this bag or this money back, and I'm gonna fuck you up on this stage. Yeah, I'm gonna keep this souvenir. You want me to keep this souvenir? Can I keep this souvenir? <laughs> I like it, I like it. Canada! Sick of hearing Dana from White, you. you the boss. Dana White, you fly. Dana White, me and you got money. We know who got the money. We don't gotta wear suits. The real men that got money don't gotta wear suits. Yeah, but what about Ellaby? 
Will you feed that motherfucker? <laughs> Toronto, I love you guys. I'm out. Well, Toronto, are you ready? Dana, you ready? Sam, you ready? You ready to face off? Hey, you got the world watching. McGregor, Mayweather, face off. Ladies and gentlemen, there you see August 26th, live on Showtime, pay-per-view. Floyd Money Mayweather and the notorious Conor McGregor live on Showtime pay-per-view. Toronto, the second stop of the Mayweather McGregor World Tour. It is Mayweather McGregor live on Showtime pay-per-view from Las Vegas, August 26th. Well, there you have it. The second stop of this Mayweather McGregor press tour. Let me tell you something. And, and you know what? You said well, Conor McGregor you. was going to come out of the box smoking. He came out of the box smoking. That's a 10 8 round for my boy. <laughs> he, he hit, that, that, out, just, he hit that out the park. Yo. When he got out Showtime and he was just yo, ready to man. go. I was he like, yo, why did he, he mad at us? Hey, no, what did I do? <laughs> hey, what I do? <laughs> hey, I thought I was trying to hype the crowd <laughs> Me up. Me too, man. I thought we were on the same team. Yeah. However, yeah. he was fired up. They made him wait for Floyd. Yeah. And one thing you know about Conor McGregor, he usually runs the show. He makes guys wait for him. So when they when they made him wait, he came out here you know, firing. The, he yeah. knew the format, and boy did he deliver. It, does that mean tomorrow he's gonna show up even later than Floyd? And, and now we're gonna we're gonna be we're gonna be waiting all night. Yeah. <laughs> I hope uh, not. Who knows, man? Who knows? They got I, flights to London to catch, no? And right. Oh, and Floyd right. takes a private jet though. He can fly whenever he wants. Exactly. I'll tell you what though. Floyd brought the pain too. Yeah, he did. Floyd, Floyd really. Yo, well, yo, you know what got me, man? When Floyd took the flag and then Connor took his bag. Oh, man. <laughs> I, I thought he was going to take the money and throw me it too. out to the crowd. Man, I was like, please don't throw the money. I was, like, oh I was nervous. God. I was like, please don't throw the money in the crowd. Yeah. I was nervous for him. Yeah. Floyd Money Mayweather, by the way, is going to come over and he's going to join us. We'll talk a little bit and get his thoughts on what he thought uh, is the second stop here. Let me tell you something. The crowd in LA, great. And played well on television. But I, I don't think it yeah. pales in comparison nah, to what nah, this, this we was, saw this out was here. A, this is a zoo. What Man. is going on here? I, I went over to Connor's team as he was doing this. I went, I, how insane is this? Have you ever seen anything like this? And John Kavanaugh was like, this is nuts. Even they didn't expect this. Yeah. This is crazy. This, this crowd, I mean, Floyd could barely get a word out. Yeah. They were just yeah. nonstop with the chance, the, the Ireland chance. It was amazing. You know, it's funny because 
Conor McGregor was supposed to join us as soon as that the thing they faced off. He was yeah. going to come over and be the first guest to join us. He walked out. He walked out with his team and stormed out. And as he stormed out, he said, "I kicked his ass today." So <laughs> you could tell he came in guns a blazing he, for this one. He came out and went, "Oh, you don't think I know how to promote a fight? Right? <laughs> you want me to promote a fight?" And he said, "This is promoting a fight." And boy, did he carry that torch and run with it. And this is the Conor McGregor that I expected in Toronto. And, and it's going to get and, better. And credit to Toronto too for yeah. showing up, man. Yeah. Oh, Toronto yeah. showed up today. They man. showed up in a big way. You know, everyone showed up. You can't write this stuff. Like, you, you know, yes, yesterday, you know, Connor, it's not that he didn't show up, but he didn't know really the platform. He didn't know the structure of it. Uh -huh. it, was a, it was a good one. But today, everyone showed up. The fans, you guys, the A-team here. Yeah, absolutely. And then Connor definitely showed up. But Floyd showed up, too. You need two to tango. And Floyd really brought it today, I thought. Hey, he took it He took it to a new level, like you said, when he pulled out that Ireland flag out there. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, boy, here we go. How about when he came up to Dana and said, we have money. Yeah. We don't oh. wear suits. <laughs> Guys, we don't have money wear suits. <laughs> that, he had, was that was a great comeback, though. It's a great comeback. But well, the best line was, he said, yeah, we have money. We're not a $3 million fighter. And then Conor McGregor said, not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how about, how about when Floyd goes, you're so confident you're going to win, put your paycheck up on it. Yeah. Right, Sign it right now. Sign the contract right now. And Conor goes, let's do it. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. That's how much these guys believe in each other. This, this was really something, folks. And I'll tell you, the atmosphere was great. Uh, the tension too palpable too between the two and you could tell boy it, the one thing I, I love about Conor McGregor that you can always bank on is some aggressive gum chewing yeah. <laughs> no one yeah. chews gum better. And then he spit it right on the McGregor. stage. He what about he spit it right on the stage? stage? How about that and he spit on the stage? I, listen, and you can tell it's getting a little personal for yeah. both of yeah, them. Absolutely. Yeah, both of them. Yeah, yeah you can tell. They, they, raise it up with age, raise the they realize hey, the magnitude. You want, to, you want to talk about getting personal? How about here he is? Hey, there he is. Floyd Money Mayweather. Hey, hey, was, I'm a little hoarse. I, I know. know you are. Uh, I'm sorry. How you guys doing? Hey, Great, man. Let, let me ask you this. It, it seemed like the, the first stop in L.A. I thought. If we were judging the fight on, on press conferences, you won round one. We gave you 10-9 round one. It seemed like Conor McGregor said, okay, I got to come out guns a blazing for <laughs> round two. What, do you, what was your thoughts? Uh, it's, it's entertaining, you know. Uh, we're giving the fans and the people what they want to see and what they want to hear. You know, I'm a little, you know, I'm a little hoarse because shouting loud, screaming loud, a lot of trash talking, but... We're giving the people what they want to see and what they want to hear. Well, you think this is going to be the new way to promote boxing? You think this is almost this is almost innovative, man? People in boxing aren't used to this. You know, in, in the UFC, MMA, in wrestling, you see this kind of loud kind of promotion. It's kind of uh, in your face type of stuff. Well, you know, we're bringing it to you're bringing it to boxing. You think this is going to be the new way to promote the modern way to promote boxing as well? But Paulie, you know, I was doing this over 20 some years ago, um, and you've been in the fight game a long time yourself. We used to trash talk, extremely loud. Um, Muhammad Ali and the fighters from the past that paved the way for me to be where I'm at uh, used to be trash talkers also. Um, in my boxing gym, in my home, we always trash talk. To, to this magnitude, though, like when, when you heard about this fight, I know you knew it was going to be big. Did you expect it to be this big? Well, they said it's, you know, um, it's projected to be bigger than the Pacquiao fight. I promise you it's bigger than your Pacquiao uh, fight. And I'm just happy that, you know, the two biggest names in combat sport combat sports is able to come together with me being off for two years me being retired for two years and me to still be relevant in a sport of boxing and be relevant in the MMA is is amazing so I have to take my hat off to the MMA fans also for just you know supporting this event I want to thank the the box the boxing fans and just a, a regular casual fan that's not even a boxing fan or MMA fan that's supporting this event. I, I feel like Conor McGregor's bringing the best out of you. We're seeing vintage Floyd Mayweather. Yes. Like, and yes. I'll, yes. I'll be you, honest. You've been I'll pretty tame. You've been from for Pacquiao. You had much respect. Uh, Birdo, well, you weren't well, very I'll, I'll be honest, well, you know, he, well, you know, a fight like the Pacquiao Mayweather, that, that's already going to sell itself. Right. That was already going to sell itself yeah. because that fight was so five years before it happened. Right. To whereas with, with the Birdo, that was just a farewell. You know, uh, yesterday I had on a hat that said 48 because in, in my 48th fight, that was my biggest fight. You know, first 48, that's what we like to call that hat. Mm -hmm. and, and the shirts I wear sometimes, I have the shirt that says 48 and I wear the hat that says 48 because uh, that was a $300 million fight, you know, where I made $300 million. Um, 
I think I can top it in this fight. We thought you were going to come out with a 50 on. I was curious why. At least it wasn't 49 or 50. I uh, thought you'd do the cock and come out with 50. Oh, no, not yet. Let's not get the yet. 50 rolling. If uh, you guys are so no, sure. Eventually, eventually. But, you know, we just take our time. We don't want to move fast. We'll take our time. When it happens, it happens. I, I feel like Connor's bringing a side out new. Where we've seen it before, but not like this. Like what you did out there, and I and I, I told these guys, I went, listen, and you know, I'm a, I'm the MMA guy here. I'm a Connor fan, yes. and I went, Connor's gonna go on to feed in this press conference. After yesterday, I looked at I looked at Capali and uh, Mara was sitting where Brian is. And I went, damn, Floyd won that one, 10-9. I said, what's gonna happen? I said, I guarantee you, Connor's gonna come in and bring the heat tonight. Let's see how Floyd reacts to it. And you brought it again, man. That's what I do. Is he, is he making you younger, Floyd? Like, like you know, when you when a fighter gets older, I, I know I've, I realize this in my own career, yeah. you kind of put the trash talk to the back, you know, you become more business-like. But then sometimes you get a younger fighter that comes in your face and almost brings that enthusiasm back. For me, it was Adrian Broner. When I fought mm -hmm. Broner, he brought yeah. that youthful trash talking back for me. For you, did you feel that? Does it make me feel like your younger days, like when you got to well, supersede the trash talk and feel young again? But I want to say something to you, Paulie, first, you know, before we talk about that. I want to say congratulations to you. Thank I'm you. glad that he's on Showtime and, and other networks promoting boxing because we need guys that know about the sport. And Thanks. I think you do a marvelous job. Thank I seen you. you doing the MMA. You do a yeah. great job. Thanks, brother. You know, I caught some highlights of the MMA yeah. before, Thanks, and I brother. caught you commentating because you guys give guys fair chance. You know, a fair chance where a lot of times we're in boxing, not so much in MMA. We're in boxing. We hurt the sport because. We're talking so negative right. about the things when sometimes it's things are is is best not said. But you do a, a hell of a job. You know about the sport. And I just try to break down tactics. You know about the sport, and also you was a hell of a fighter. Congratulations, because you know when I when I first seen you fight, I knew from the gate that you was a, you know you was a hell of a boxer, and you know you had hell of a boxing skills. And I wanted to say thank you for even going to help. McGregor out. Yeah, you know but I'm just saying? saying, are you mad? At, no. And McGregor said, look, I want him as a sparring guy. It's business, and I understand business. I, I, the way I looked at it was no, this. No, wait, wait, wait. Go ahead. Wait, right. You don't have to explain nothing to me. Mm -hmm. Thanks, You're here to do a job. Thanks, Jim. You know, and whatever I do. He was talking shit yesterday. Yeah. And, and, you know, <laughs> About and, me. Yeah. And what I know. And whatever I do is, is a job that I do. You know, um, if someone come and sp is boxing me and sparring me, I may not know that they're getting ready for Paulie. I'm just doing my job, but he's just doing his job at the end of the day. But what you're saying, is he bringing a youth and a youngness? I mean, is he bringing the young Mayweather back? Uh, excitement, you know? It that's, that's, so. This is exciting. It is. Yeah, right? it is. That's what I feel. He said he's going to stop you within four rounds. Honestly, <laughs> let me ask you this. Is, <laughs> there you any, is, is, yeah, is there anything that Conor McGregor does that you've seen that you said, you know what, I need to watch out for um, that? I can't really say, you know. Um, that's a no. I'm just saying, I've been around the sport a long time. Um... I have a lot of experience. Yeah, but not, not with a guy like Conor McGregor, the way he moves. Are you bringing anyone in to kind of mimic his movement? Have you brought any MMA guys in, or are you just keeping it all boxed and doing no, what you do? Um, we brought a guy with a we got a we have a guy from Costa Rica with a real awkward style. You know, I have some, I have some yes, I have yeah. some solid guys that I'm that I'm working with, and um, I can feel an age on me. Of course, I, do I feel forty? Absolutely. Well, in, in boxing years, I'm probably older than 40. <laughs> well, well, let's wrap it up with this. I know you got to go. When, when you thought about this fight, and I know you thought about it here now that it's, yeah. it's come to fruition, how do you see this fight ending? Um, I think from out the gate, I think from the first round, it's going to kind of be a chess match, us filling each other out. Um, but if, if it's not a chess match, we're going to get it on from the beginning, whatever he want to do. With him saying he's going to stop you in four rounds, do you think he need, he you think he feels like that's his only way to go? Like in the Nate Diaz fight, he came out guns flying. Once he gunned them, once he threw all the guns out, he had nothing left in the second round. Do you think it's, he's looking at it this way where if I don't get Floyd out in the first four rounds, I'm in trouble? So let, let me predict a fourth round KO because I'm going to shoot all the guns in the first four rounds? Uh, you know, anything can happen. I mean, I mean, in contact sports, period. You know, he's a warrior. I'm a warrior. And... Um, if no one has never has ever noticed, okay, throughout my career, okay, in the beginning of my career, I was a huge knockout artist. Mm -hmm. Eventually, you know, I was in so many just hard, you know, the banging of the fist, banging of the fist, and working in the gym extremely hard. My body broke down. Also moving up in weight, Floyd. Yes, yes, but yeah. I, the, my last hurrah was probably the Shambay Mitchell or the Arturo Gotti fight. After that, my body was no good. So me, for me to still be able to compete and beat the top level guys and, and, and still have a sharp mind, I think it's remarkable. 
because because of this. They, everyone says all Floyd do is run or Floyd don't hit hard. If that's the case, nobody's walking through me. Mm -hmm. I'm waiting to see if, if anybody can walk through me. They say, you know, Pacquiao, I mean, of course, he's a heavy hitter. Canelo's a heavy hitter. De La Hoy's a heavy hitter. And, a, and we can keep uh, no, Mar Marcus, Mar 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 Marcus Maidana, Coda, all Cotto? these guys. Yeah. I mean, he fought Coda, I fought Coda. Yeah. Motherfucker's a heavy hitter, yeah. Yeah. and he's strong as fuck. He know it. Do you feel does, any does pressure, he... Floyd? you feel any pressure going into this? Because the most of the boxing experts say, ah, oh, this is easy work for Floyd. This is too easy for him well, to get 50. Well you, well, you have to say, I mean, we're just going to be honest. With me taking years off, and he's still active, and he's younger, he's taller, he has a longer reach, he's, yeah. he, he has a 74. I have a 72, but I mean everything lean is leaning really towards Conor McGregor. But you know, only thing I can do is do what I do best. Do you think about that, Floyd? Do you think about all-time greats that have taken long layoffs, come back and and shown Russ. to the point where they got beat? Ali came back with Burbick. Ali's all-time great. Uh, Leonard came back with Camacho, all-time great. They came back a little too late. You think about that? Does that cross I, your mind I mean, at all? I, I mean, we'll just see. Hmm. You know, uh, I've been I've been in the gym working, you know, day to day, and and I didn't I didn't fall so, some. Those guys did, were all time great, just like you're an all time yes. great. Does it cross your mind? I mean, I just say anything can happen. I so, feel like you're taking a bigger risk, to be honest, because this is the unknown. Like if you're fighting another boxer, yes. that's easy to Floyd walks through this guy. But you're and my I tip my hat to you because to get to 50, you're not going the easy way about it. I think everyone goes, ah, oh, this is. Neat. I disagree, man. It's a huge risk for you. I think that. Uh, my thing is really just, I just want to, I just want to, well, I just want to break my record. Yeah. I really want to just break my record. Does any of this ever get to you? The, the, the crowds when they I, go crazy, pro McGregor, and they boo you. Does that, yeah, you like? Hey, but it's on. obvious, I'm doing something right thus far. I mean, throughout my career, because well, Floyd, this don't get to you, man. This is what you miss, I, man. I, this I is mean, what this is what fighters I, I, I miss. Don't, I don't really miss this. You don't no, miss it? No, no. It was just that. You know, I was in a, a position. I seen an opportunity. I, I and see, and I see, and I, and I was checking to see if the UFC or Conor McGregor will bite on it, mm. and they bit on it. Mm. And now we in a. Here we go. We in a March. We in a, Here uh, we are. Uh, we, uh, I like to call this a billion dollar fight. Yeah. <laughs> what, what, what do you think in Brooklyn? What do you think we're gonna get in New York City? Um. Uh, we're going to get some more. Some more of this? Some more excitement. I saw you yeah. got something planned for the last press conference. You said you're going to save something what, for yeah, London. What you, what you got for the talking, talking about girls. You said, yeah. I'll save but, it. I'll save it. So you, I, it, I, do you I, have a game plan for every specific press conference? I don't really have no game plan. <laughs> I'm a counter punch. I let him do it. I let him do it. I let him do his thing. Yeah, yeah. I let him do his thing. I had to come back. You know, I had to counter punch. I got you. But uh, you, you got to realize I'm not phased by this. Yeah, I'm yeah. not phased by the fans because. You must understand, the fans cannot fight, fight for you. That's what you said yeah. at the press round, yeah. When it comes down to the two competitors, it, come down, it comes down to the two fighters. Yeah. I've been here so many times. And one thing about me, I've been hit by some of the best. And all I did was bite down and say, okay, it's okay. I, I got hit by Shane Mosley, you know, went right back to the corner. He said, what's going on? Say, everything okay. I said, I'll be, another, I'll be a different fighter when I go back out there. I key, you know, I lock in, I key in, I said, okay, here we go. Let's switch up the game plan now. Let's do what we have to do. That's nice. Money Mayweather. Thank hey, you. brother, appreciate the I time, man. thank you. Yeah, hey, thanks, man. All right, thanks. We'll see you in Brooklyn. All right. we'll see my you dude, in Brooklyn tomorrow. All, All right. right? All right, appreciate it. That's Money Mayweather here as the second stop of this press tour uh, wraps up here in Toronto. What a night. What a night it was. What right. a night. How do we top that in New York? Well, it got to be in New York City, man. You got well, to we top it. We were wondering the same thing yesterday. And I, I top don't either. You gotta, These guys keep topping hey, it. Hey, you got to top <laughs> it in New York City, man. They make our job easy, man. You know what I mean? It's the, uh, it's the Big Apple. We got New Every day you guys are digging a little more. <laughs> and digging a little more. We got New York. We got London. And everybody's saying, oh, I hope, hopefully you guys don't fight. Listen. We can't, we can't mess up this one. Right. It's too much money. It's too much money. No. 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 Come close, but no, 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 no. We can't do it. You can't do it. Appreciate it, Floyd. So uh, that's going to do it here for this one. Well, what a night here in Toronto. Again, August 26th is when it goes down. Yes. The money fight, as yes. Floyd likes to call it here, at the T-Mobile Arena in the fight capital of the world, Las Vegas, Nevada. You can see it live on Showtime Pay-Per-View. For Paulie Malinaji, Brendan Schwab, Floyd Mayweather, Conor McGregor, I'm Brian Custer. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in Brooklyn.
When things go wrong, I try to make them. Daniel Cormier is one of the very best who has ever competed in mixed martial arts. But in facing John Jones, he's facing the greatest talent that we've ever seen inside the octagon. Biggest night of the year today. This fight between these two men is so important right now. UFC featherweight championship. I mean, this is what you would call a juicy card. As I started to go out and look at talent around the country, I started to realize how much talent there is. The level of athlete is getting better and better. This has never been done in the history of combat sports. We're literally going out there all over the world to try to find the next world champion. Growing up in Waianae, Hawaii, you're always fighting, you know. I believe that God has put me on earth to be a champion one day. My mom did a great job of raising six kids. Sometimes we didn't know if we were going to have heat or not. Sometimes we didn't know if we were going to have hot water or not. We got through it, and now I'm here fighting for them. I have no idea how I was comfortable sleeping in a football field in Hamilton Park. I had a bag of training clothes. I knew deep down this is all going to change. I was diagnosed with leukemia when I was two and a half years old. And I've always been a fighter. All I needed to ever do was show Dana that I deserve to be here. I came from the bottom, clawing my way to the top. This is everything I've been working for. I'm ready. I was the little guy in a pretty rough neighborhood. I'm going to achieve greatness, and this is just step one. There's no denying that I should be in the UFC. I fight for my kids. I fight for my dreams. I fight for the glory. I fight for my kids, I fight for my family, and I fight to be the best in the world. The only person I fear is my mom. I ain't fighting her, so we good. What's up, Dana? I hope you have that multi-fight deal for me, because I'm coming for the knockout. If you know me, you know what I'm looking for. I'm looking for exciting fighters that go for broke and try to win. I came from the jungle. I'm ready to be one of the top fighters in UFC. I deserve the second chance. I belong in the UFC. Who knows what's going to happen, but I'm in there to finish my opponent. For Dana to be impressed, I have to finish this guy. I'm going to put on the fight of my life. The Tuesday Night Contender Series, live and only on UFC Fight Pass.